Just how outrageous and hilarious could 300 Days of Graveyard Keeper possibly be? Well, in this epic movie, I think you'll find the shenanigans simply do not stop. Welcome to 300 Days of Graveyard Keeper, the movie. I began my journey buying some milk from Gary and his teddy bear. I headed through the rain towards home where my love awaited me. Next thing I knew, I was in the foggy void and this dude informed me a new chapter in my life had begun. I was now a graveyard keeper and he suggested I dig up Jerry. Whew, that is a good start. Let's go dig up some bodies. Love this game already. Oh yeah, we got the pixel art vibes. I was enjoying those vibes, no doubt, no doubt. There appeared to be plenty of room for crafting, farming, pooping in this outhouse with a love heart on its door, and no doubt many other satisfying endeavors. But first things first, exhuming the dead. <laughs> Holy sod, I'm a skull. Are you Jerry? Mm, why would you think I'm Jerry? Blah, 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 blah. Jerry the Skull had amnesia, which I guess is fair considering his lack of brains, but he eventually remembered enough to instruct me to have a chat with this donkey. The donkey had a fresh corpse from the town, which was great news that made me laugh. <laughs> Uh, who made this game? The donkey was amazed that I could understand him, and he was also something of an anti-capitalist, perhaps even a communist, considering he called me his comrade. Grab that juicy corpse while it's still fresh. I took the body into the morgue, where Jerry instructed me to slice its flesh. He also told me he'd help me figure out how to get home if I bring him a beer. So, following the instructions of the alcoholic skull, I placed the body down on the preparation table and got to slicing. I extracted some flesh and immediately unlocked three cooking recipes. Burger, sandwich, and baked meat. Seems good, cannibalism is delicious. Next, it was time to bury. So I used this little blueprint desk to place a grave here, dug it and popped the body in. And so the first of many corpses was processed and buried in the church graveyard. And I got a burial certificate for my troubles. The bishop then wandered over. He's my boss, I guess. He said he visits the church every purple Sunday and he told me to repair the graveyard and that once I've improved its quality to five, he'll give me a promotion. I didn't really know what that meant, but the graveyard was at minus 29. So I had some work to do. Do. He also taught me about wood, stone, and technologies. There are multiple tech trees in this game, which looked juicy to me. I love a good tech tree. I also saw that there was an NPC page where quests are listed and a map, which was mostly in fog at this point. I checked out this trunk left behind by the previous graveyard keeper, who apparently disappeared 30 years ago. There were some repair kits and tools to get me started. I cleaned up a few of these scraggly bushes, and as you can see, this was quickly consuming my blue energy bar up here. I did manage to increase the graveyard quality up to minus 25 with my efforts before wandering off to investigate the world. I found this spot that's blocked until a certain day, a giant wheat field, and the village where I entered the Dead Horse Tavern. No one was particularly chatty in here except for Mrs. Chain who sold recipes and her husband Horadric the Tavern Keep. He told me the unauthorized meat in my bags looks delicious. Calm down, cannibal. He also had me deliver a letter to the blacksmith. And just like in every other pixel art game known to man, the blacksmith asked me to kill some slimes. Also, he gave me the blueprint for a furnace. I then revisited the tavern. That was Miss Charm Munro, clearly a very gifted singer. And she told me the same thing every woman tells me. Go away and come back when you're less pathetic. This poet called me over and asked me to get him some paper and ink so that he can write poems to impress Miss Charm. It looks like you've got paper and ink right in front of you already, you peanut, but fair enough. The tavern keep gave me a beer as thanks for delivering his letter. And then I headed out as day two dawned and wandered down here where I found the farmer. This guy sells seeds. I didn't buy any just yet, but it was good to know. And he taught me some veggie dish recipes. Then Jerry ambushed me from behind a bush and taught me about foraging. I investigated my farm a bit, placing down a garden bed, but of course I had no seeds, so I resolved to go back to the farm bloke once I had some money. I then investigated the yard blueprint desk and the basement in which I heard this weird bald bloke snake raging about being locked out. There were multiple blocked passageways for me to clear once I had the resources and some bags of flour and old broken barrels to collect. I drew some water from the well in the yard and then had a cheeky snooze. When you sleep in this game, time moves faster and you replenish energy. Makes sense to me. I awoke and worked out I could take the water out of the bucket, which was revolutionary, and I used it with flour to make some dough at my cooking table. I then chucked some dough in the oven to cook into bread, using some sticks I'd collected as fuel. I then foraged some mushrooms and flowers, and I chopped down my first tree. I carted the big old logs back to store in my yard's timber stockpile, and then couldn't figure out what to do with them, which is a common theme by the way. I must admit I was reasonably confused early on in this game. There are lots of mechanics that you've got to kind of work out by bumbling around like a 
goose. Good thing for me though, I am a grade A goose. Anyway, I then gave Jerry his B. He was disappointed that it wasn't very strong, but with that I'd earned 20 points of friendship and I was able to ask Jerry how to get home to my real world. He said there is a portal on Witch's Hill and that I should check out the library under the church or chat to the astrologer to find out more. He also told me to get him some wine. There were quests piling up, but for now it was time to deal with body number two. I stole its flesh, had a look at these red and white skulls, which were almost certainly important, but meant nothing to me at this point, and then headed to the graveyard to bury it, earning my second burial certificate. I grabbed my first two pieces of bread, which were ready, put more on to cook, and then headed out. I'm running east to see the astrologer, because I think he's around on whatever this day is, the blue moon the Blue Crescent Moon Day. I was correct about what day the astrologer visits, but I was reading the calendar incorrectly. See, I thought whatever was currently at the top of the circle represented the current day, when in fact it was the bottom of the circle. In other words, I was confused about what day it was and the astrologer was not here. I did at least find the fisherman who tasked me with finding him six moths. He promised to give me a fishing rod in return. I wandered around foraging as the sun rose on day four and I was getting lots of green tech points. So I whipped open the tech menu and unlocked the skill to harvest bones and skin from from the dead bodies, a good find. By the way, you get red tech points from crafting, green points from natural activities like foraging and farming, and blue points from spiritual activities. And these blue points are pretty scarce early on. I stumbled upon this weird bloke, Dig, and rudely assumed that he must be crazy. He insisted he's not, and then proceeded to say a bunch of crazy things before asking me to bring him some honey. I continued my wandering and found this Baron that asked for four silver quality fish fillets, this carpenter, Tress, Rosa, who sold dairy goods, and the beekeeper. I then sold my two burial certificates at the tavern for three silver. I decided to use these earnings to buy honey for Dig, because I love Dig. Except by the time I got to him, he had disappeared for the night, which was very rude. And so I made the long walk home. I put some baked mushrooms on to cook. By the way, the bread gives 15 energy and these mushroom skewers will give 12 each, which was handy, but certainly wasn't enough to keep my energy topped up for long. And so for the early game, snoozing up a storm was the best way to replenish energy. After this particular snooze, the ghost Yorick paid me a visit, complaining about how mean the ghost of the body in the bottom right corner of the graveyard was behaving. He gave me an exhumation license and told me to dig up the body and chuck it in the river. And I've never been one to argue with a ghost, so guess what I did? <laughs> what have I done? What have I done? Like the video and subscribe if you think it's perfectly normal to dig up a body and dump it in the river all because a ghost told you to. I investigated my tech tree a bit and unlocked beekeeping, soaring and firewood before collecting a bunch of stone and wood as I cleared out my yard a bit. I built my first workstation, a sawhorse, and this lets me cut those big logs I've been collecting into flitch or billets. I used the last of my energy to break this big old rock and then headed for a snooze. I woke Yorick the ghost who was thankful that I removed the troublesome corpse from the graveyard. He explained the red and white skulls to me. They represent a corpse's spiritual status. Basically, the corpses affect my graveyard quality, and white skulls are good, red skulls are bad. And the way to get rid of red skulls and increase the white skulls is by removing body parts or embalming. I made a furnace and chopped up some billets to make a chopping station, and then chopped some firewood to fuel my oven, in which I continued baking bread. I collected some more resources through the night, and suddenly it was day seven. I continued acquainting myself with the world when I made a grand discovery. There was a bunch of iron to collect directly north of my house. The days in this game are really quick by the way, so it was somehow already night by the time I was done collecting most of the iron, and I was ambushed by bats. I killed a couple but then ran out of energy so I was forced to flee. Ah. Ah! I'd collected a whopping 46 iron ore, so I put some on to smelt. I probably should have just slept to renew my energy, but I hate using time sleeping. So I ate some fresh bread and a bunch of berries and mushrooms and kept working. I unlocked transplanting, which lets me plant orchard trees, a few simple grave decorations, and the ability to extract blood and fat from bodies. I collected more stone, fought some slimes, collected more wood, and then welcomed my third juicy corpse. This one had one red skull and two white, and when I removed the blood, it became three white skulls. So I guess this person had bad blood. I buried the corpse, put a bunch more iron onto smelt, and then finally figured out I could cook bread more than one at a time if I simply used this little arrow. A revolutionary find. On day nine, I unlocked woodworking and made myself a carpenter's bench, granting me access to planks, which are very handy for crafting tons of various things. I made a couple and then made a wooden cross and grave fence. I took these to the graveyard and placed them both on this grave. And as you can see, the grave's quality went from a zero to a three. And with that, I finally understood how to improve my graveyard quality. Quality. 
Removing these scraggly trees helped a bit too. And then I figured out I could repair some of these old grave decorations using the repair kits I was given. I'd improved the graveyard quality up to minus 11 when another body arrived. It was the exact same as the last body. All I had to do was remove the blood. I unlocked stoneworking, mining and primitive forging and then finally had a sleep. And on day 10, I wanted to clear this rubble, but I needed simple iron parts. I headed out collecting mushrooms and berries as I went and I sold my two burial certificates to the tavern. I then hit up the blacksmith and bought the four simple iron parts I needed. While I was out, Donkey brought another body and it's such a long run home, it was night by the time I returned to carve it up. I decided to remove everything from this body and I made a surgeon's mistake, maiming the body and reducing its quality. Uh, whoops, I can put the skin back on. <laughs> So it turns out you can put body parts back in and that actually returned one of the white skulls to this particular body. Preparing corpses is quite the art form. I slept half of day 11 just to get my energy back. And when I emerged, Jerry was rather distressed that the Inquisitor was visiting Witch's Hill. And I promised to go be a distraction so Jerry didn't get crushed by the Inquisitor's wrath. I wandered over and the Inquisitor was a whispery fellow who invited me to join him at a witch burning ceremony. Uh, yeah, let's, let's, it would be my honor. The Inquisitor seemed worried that the dark cult was rising and he of course wants the church to be all powerful. So he needs to eliminate any potential threats. I don't know about all that, but who can argue with a fun time burning some witch? The Inquisitor said he didn't trust anyone in the village and asked if I would assist him. I agreed and he said he'd have some tasks for me on the same day next week. And this is when I finally realized. Oh, oh, oh. I've just realized something. I was about to say it isn't this day. It's this day, but it's the one on the it's the one on the bottom that shows what day it is. For goodness sake. Uh, well, that helps. I explored the witch's hill a bit. Looks like this area's had a bit of a dramatic past. And then I tended to this body, which had decayed a bit while I was off gallivanting. Kind of loses a bit of juice if you're a bit slow to the punch. I see. I guess I just trial and error this and I can always put it back in. Oh, that worked. Happy days. It was Blue Crescent Moon Day on day 12, so it was off to find the astrologer. I dropped by the tavern to sell some burial certificates, bought some nails from the blacksmith, and then... Ding dong, bing bang bong. I gave Dig his honey, in return for which he taught me the cake recipe. I then continued east to the lighthouse. The astrologer promised to help me, but he wanted a cranium first, and unfortunately I forgot to bring one. I ran all the way home, grabbed a skull, and ran all the way back. Oh, here he is, he's leaving. No! Stop! If you're not gonna talk to me, then you're gonna have to push me. The astrologer pushed me all the way to this exit that leads into town. Looks like I need a town pass to go there. And I guess I'll have to wait a week before I can give the bloke his skull. I made a stone cutter because I wanted more stone repair kits for the graveyard, but they required clay, which I had no idea how to get. And so I wandered in search of clay, but I had no luck. Though I did find a couple of bee trees, which gave me honey and beeswax, as well as a bunch of berries to forage. I found this broken apiary, which I guess I can repair to keep my own bees if I want. And also this blocks road, which I can unblock to extend my lands further north. This game has lots going on. There is no doubt about that. My rusty pickaxe wore out, so I repaired it and put a bunch more iron onto smelt and headed to bed. On day 14, I realized I could make gravestones with my stone cutter and these provide plus two graveyard quality. So I made a bunch. I started placing them, but was interrupted by another body arriving. So I dealt with that and then continued with the gravestones and managed to get the graveyard quality up to zero. Finally, no longer in the negatives. I went on the hunt for more stone, made myself six more gravestones and then decided I wanted to use the daylight to buy some seeds from the farmer. The berries and mushroom skewers had been doing decently, but as you can see, I was tapped for energy and fresh out of food at this point. So I was desperate for a better energy solution and I figured growing crops was my best bet. I bought 10 cabbage, 10 carrot and six wheat seeds. I quickly ducked into the tavern to sell another burial certificate. And while there, I noticed the merchant was visiting. Apparently this guy technically owns the farmland south of my house, but he agreed to let me continue using it if I brought him some veggies. He wants 12 carrots, cabbage and beets. He also had chronic hiccups, so he asked me to get him some hiccup grass, which is supposedly a cure. I planted some cabbage seeds in my one garden bed and realized you need four seeds at a time to plant. I also couldn't work out how to water the crops, so I assumed you didn't need to. I placed down a bunch more garden beds, but I was still dead out of energy, so I headed to bed. But first I had a quick tech session, unlocking garden beds with sticks, compost, and the ability to remove the brain, heart, and intestines of corpses. Very juicy. I awoke with full energy and finished planting my seeds before scooping this corpse up and removing 
removing its heart. It didn't seem to be particularly beneficial, but when you've just learned how to chop hearts out, you just gotta give it a try, what can I say? I buried him and continued placing gravestones. I had to remove a few old broken ones, but managed to get the graveyard quality up to six, which means old mate Bishop will be very pleased with me come Sunday. I then made myself a wooden anvil, so I can make my own nails and iron parts now instead of throwing money away at the blacksmith. But once again, a complete lack of energy did me dirty. I snoozed the day away and goodness me, it was foggy when I awoke. I made a bunch of nails and simple iron parts. Actually, I'm curious, can I sell this stuff? See, I was struggling to make money in this game and I needed a bunch to buy more seeds. I sold my latest burial certificate and also sold 30 nails and seven simple iron parts to the blacksmith. He only had limited money, so I basically had him buy as much as he could afford. I had over 10 silver, so the plan worked and I bought a bunch of seeds from Old MacDonald. On my way home, I dropped by Witch's Hill as the Inquisitor was back for his weekly visit. He tasked me with gathering 20 firewood and 10 flyers to assist in his next witch burning. This guy views burnings as a spectacle, hence the flyers to invite people. What an interesting bloke. I then got to planting and I also placed the trunk down so I've got a little storage area for my farm. After a snooze, I awoke to find my first cabbage patch ready on day 18. It gave me six cabbage, five crop waste and returned three seeds to me. It was crescent moon day, which meant the astrologer was in town. So I gave him a skull. With that, I had 10 friendship points and I was able to ask him about the portal on Witch's Hill. He said the previous graveyard keeper was also obsessed with the portal and that he disappeared at some point and that all the astrologer had left was a key. Apparently this will help me get deeper into the underground beneath my house. And I was instructed to look for the old gravekeeper's diary, which might hold more clues. I explored some more and discovered this passage north to a mountain fort, but I couldn't gain access just yet. I also found the lumberjack who asked me to bring him an iron ax. I then threaded through the forest, collecting mushrooms galore, and I came away with 26, enough to cook 15 skewers. I found some more crops had grown, so I harvested and replanted what I could. And then it was day 19, the Lord's day. So of course the self-absorbed Bishop was back, checking himself out in his hand mirror. He's looking at himself in the mirror. <laughs> I informed him of the graveyard's glow up and he officially appointed me prior of the church and it was time for me to give my first sermon. He informed me that I can decorate the church to raise its quality. He also gave me a casual prayer to use for my first service. I gave my first sermon saying the profound words, may the force be with you. And I was rewarded with three faith for my efforts. And from now on, it was my duty to preach and pray every Sunday. I now also had access to this Royal mailbox out front, which offered various services, including exhumation licenses in case I want to dig up any more bodies and I also got access to the church basement. There was a study table down here and I could use faith and science to learn more about almost every item in the game. I chopped down these old broken bookshelves and found this note which I studied at the table to earn four science. I studied flesh and it informed me that flesh decomposes into nothing so I guess I didn't learn much but I did receive 20 blue tech points, the first blue points I'd ever gotten. I researched green jelly which decomposes into fluid and essence whatever that means and this one gave me green points. I then worked out the item literally tells you what type of points you'll receive so I studied blood and earned myself another 20 blue points. Now I was finally able to unlock some tech that had previously been unreachable. I unlocked insect gathering so I can get those moths for the fisherman's quest, master gatherer which grants a perk that increases the amount of forageables I get and then found I was spoiled for choice so I decided to hang on to the remaining 25 blue points for now. I made four composters and then harvested and replanted my remaining crops. I cooked 30 of my carrots into 60 carrot cutlets which provide 15 energy each. This was a glorious find. And these became my go-to food ongoing. I snoozed much of day 20 away before doing a little work around the yard and collecting my first peat and maggots from the compost. And it looks like peat works as a fertilizer. I headed into town and visited the merchant, delivering him all the veggies he asked for. He wasn't particularly impressed, but he saw potential. So he told me to bring him a trading license, at which point he'd be willing to go into business with me. I foraged a bunch of berries and mushrooms, and I now collected double thanks to that perk I researched. And then I unlocked bee domestication and grape farming. I collected my remaining carrot cutlets and then figured I might as well make some bread too. I turned all my wheat into flour and all my flour into dough ready to cook. I made another trunk for the yard, investigated the beekeeping situation, but found I needed paper to repair it. So I put that on hold for now. On day 23, I finally remembered I could make planks. So I made some as well as some iron parts and wooden wedges and finally unblocked these passages downstairs. The donkey was visiting and he was very disappointed. I'd turned capitalist with my various ventures 
years, so he told me he was no longer willing to call me comrade. He also left me a most generous present, a big old donkey poo poo. It had a bunch of carrot seeds in it though, so joke's on you donkey, you just increased the profitability of my capitalist farming enterprise. I butchered and buried the body donkey brought me and then found my crops were ready once more. So I harvested and replanted with peat as fertilizer. I put the fresh batch of carrots on to cook and then checked out the underground. Off to the right were two ladders. One was blocked for now, but the other took me straight into town. This was great news. No more painfully long walks through wheat fields. And over to the left was a blocked passage leading to the church basement and this gate, which as yet I could not unlock. I researched paper crafting and writing supplies, but I needed more complex materials to make the church workbench and writing desk. So I unlocked advanced forging, tools and glass as well. I also unlocked business of faith so I can make those flyers for the inquisitor. Snake had showed up under my house and he was not a friendly fellow. He threatened to stab me, so I threatened him back, which was probably a bad idea. Fortunately, no blood was spilled, but I need to give him five faith orbs in order to convince him to help me. I crafted myself iron tools. These are 30% more efficient than my original rusty tools. And I made an iron anvil on which I was able to make some complex iron parts. Oh crap, it's... Sunday, I need to go do my sermon. I almost forgot. I earned three faith and 27 copper for my troubles, which seemed a little low since my sermon was such a banger. I studied the chaos solution I found in the chest down here to earn myself 10 more blue points, and I unlocked writing. I crafted some more planks and increased the yard space. So much room for activities. And I also made myself another furnace for some reason. I crafted some metal materials, harvested and replanted my crops, and then returned to the church to make my desk. This was where I'd be able to use the stories I'd been accumulating each time I completed a quest. I could turn them into notes and then turn three notes into a chapter and then use a chapter to make higher quality prayers for my church services. But I needed a source of ink and paper before I could do any of that. So I collected a bunch of wood and gathered materials to make the church workbench. My good friend Donkey arrived to distract me from my writing efforts and he declared that he was on strike until I oiled his cartwheels and that each body would cost me five carrots from now on. He was not gonna tolerate being taken advantage of by a capitalist. Flame and unions. I had a bunch of carrots handy so I I placed these in his box, but I wasn't sure where to find oil. I used the bat wings I collected early to make pigskin paper which I was able to turn into clean paper. Now all I needed was some black paint for the ink. I had no idea how to get that though, so it was another case of I guess I'll figure that out later. I made this scroll shelf for extra storage and studied all the clean paper to collect 16 science. And I studied this grave cross and marker to earn another 30 blue tech points. I needed to generate a bunch of red points too, so I did some crafting and chopping. But as daytime hit, I headed into town because I had a theory on how to get some oil. I vaguely remembered Dig sold seed oil, so I bought some as well as some hemp seed. Seeds. Turns out I was correct, as I was able to turn the seed oil into 10 oil, with which I greased up Donkey's cart and got him moving again. I stole the skin from this body to use for paper, and then things went downhill with the surgery, so I ended up butchering the crap out of this body, which wasn't my finest moment. Considering this body was useless for the graveyard quality, as it had zero white skulls, I decided to research cremation. I made a pyre and set it to burn. I still got the burial certificate, which is good, but I guess it probably should have been a burning certificate, but I'm not gonna argue. And I also got some ash and salt. I finally got back to collecting red points and once I had 200 I unlocked the circular saw. I made one immediately and crafted what I was after, some wooden beams. I used these to unblock these passages down here so now the morgue, church and my house were all connected underground which is quite convenient. I then realized there was a random body out here so I grabbed it and butchered the crap out of it for parts. And I have no idea why but I buried it and put a headstone on it even though that does literally nothing. I should have burnt this one but clearly I was still learning at this point. It was Sunday so the Bishop was here for a visit and I asked him what to do next and he informed me he was working on a soup kitchen because he felt it made him look good and he needed some bowls. So he taught me how to collect clay and sand and asked me to make him some. I got a tad overexcited by my newfound ability to dig infinite clay from this hole and so I completely missed my opportunity to perform this week's sermon, meaning I threw away this week's faith, which was a big fail. I suddenly realized I could repair this mortuary desk in the morgue, so I did, and made myself a preparation place and a pallet in which I can store bodies. I already had had a preparation place, so that was a bit pointless, but I at least now had three spots to store bodies. Another body arrived and I managed to prepare a five white skull body. Very nice. I then sold all the cabbage I'd grown to the farmer and bought all the carrot seeds I could. Carrots were my main food source and my means of paying donkey. So I figured I should just go hard on the carrots. I also sold the three burial certificates I'd accrued and then returned to deal with yet another body. These bodies come thick and fast. I'm not gonna lie, it is quite overwhelming. 
On day 34, I planted all them carrot seeds I'd bought and then finally repaired this bridge over here to the west, which granted me access to the swamp. And crucially, more iron nodes. I had almost run out of iron, so this was a great find. The swamp was a kind of spiral maze, so I wandered through collecting iron until I reached the center where I found this hut. There was a lady who thought I was a foul spirit, which was very offensive. She had forgotten who she was and she asked me if she looked like a fairy princess or a witch. And she told me to get her a health potion to restore her memory. And she unlocked access to a bunch of alchemy stations. Escaping the swamp was quite a pain, but I got there eventually. And once out, I found a bunch more iron to collect, another blocked path north and a giant pile of sand. I collected sand until my shovel broke and then headed home. On my way, I scooped up this fairly decayed body and while processing it, yet another body arrived. I popped this second one on the pallet and left it there for later and buried the first. On day 36, I researched pottery, made myself a pottery station and crafted the 20 bowls for the bishop. I also unlocked woodcutter, which made me a more effective log collector and also allowed me to chop down big trees, including these ones clogging up my yard. I harvested and replanted, popped this body on the prep table, but just left it there because I was tired of dealing with bodies and then finally figured out how to catch moths. It turns out they can be found in flowers at night. Bishop was back, so I gave him his bowls and he said they were ugly, which was perfect for the poor people. Good one, Bishop. He said I could upgrade the church to a big church, but I had some work to do first. I needed to get the graveyard to 30 quality, the church interior to 20 quality, and he also wanted me to give him some fish. I performed my weekly sermon and netted only one faith because my prayer failed. So that was a bit sad. And it became clear to me that I needed to put some work into my church interior. I unlocked comfort of faith so that I could begin making pews. I gathered the necessary materials and then plonked four down. This raised the church quality up to nine points. And I would have researched more decorative options, but I was fresh out of blue tech points. I then collected flowers until the sun came up and managed to get myself six moths. I gave the lumberjack the iron axe he requested, in return for which I earned the lasagna and pasta recipes. And then I gave the fisherman his moths and he gave me a simple fishing rod, as well as some fishy cooking recipes. A third body had arrived, so I figured I'd better actually deal with this one. So I harvested all its organs and burned it. I had quite a few organs piling up, so I gave them pride of place in this scroll shelf. I love a good library of brains, hearts, and guts. Beautiful to behold. I wandered back into the swamp to grab some hiccup grass, which I needed for the merchant's quest. And then I gave fishing a crack. The fishing mini game was a simple one, reminiscent of literally every other game's fishing mini game. And I caught myself 10 waterfall gudgeons before for returning to deal with another body. I once again butchered the heck out of this one. I was doing a stinker of a job as gravekeeper, to be honest. I then crafted up a storm, harvested and replanted my crops and then repaired the apiary. I needed 10 bees to make a beehive though. So I had some bee hunting to do. I put a bunch of glass on to smelt in my second furnace and then dealt with yet another fresh body. I then finally cleared the path north and headed off to explore. There was an enormous tree with the future option to make a big tree sawmill once I unlocked the research, I guess. There was a big forest with some bee trees that nearly killed me, vicious, vicious bees. And at this fishing spot, I managed to catch a silver quality bream. So that was promising. And all the way north, I made some most curious finds. There was a cabin in the woods where I could set up a secondary base of sorts. And there were giant stone and marble quarries. I happened to have the materials to build the marble quarry and also chip off a couple of slabs. And over here, the most interesting find of all. The mine is full of toxic gases. If only I could find someone who doesn't need to breathe. What about Jerry? Jerry the skull. So it looks like there's, there's good stuff to collect in there, but I can't go in there. I need some kind of slave. And as I was wandering home with my marble slab, I found this coal seam. I collected a stack of 100 coal, and this will be very handy for fueling my machines. Crafted at zombie mine. So that's called a zombie mine. Zombies don't need to breathe. I think I'm gonna get zombies to work the mine for me eventually. <laughs> I think that's what's going to happen. So yeah, my guess was there were zombies in my future. This was a very exciting prospect. Nothing would make me happier than a bunch of zombies collecting raw materials for me. But now though, I headed home with some marble and actually dealt with this corpse responsibly. And it was somehow Sunday again. So I gave another sermon and it appeared the improvement in the church resulted in a bigger crowd and I managed to earn a whopping four faith. I then had a well-earned snooze to regenerate my health since I was at literally one HP thanks to those vicious bees. I tended my crops and kept my oven cooking them carrots and then headed into town to sell the four burial certificates I'd accumulated. And I attempted to sell my fish and fish fillets to the fisherman, but he wasn't interested, which was rude. I then made a bunch of grave fences and wooden crosses. And I used my new coal to fuel a bunch more iron smelting. I placed down fences and crosses willy nilly and managed to get the graveyard quality up from eight all the way to 27. The merchant was in town, so I gave him his hiccup grass and it worked. His hiccups were cured, but it caused him to lose his taste. He said to track down a witch that used to give him love potions, which was 
was weird, but he reckoned they'd be able to help. Fortunately, I happened to know a witch. I made stone repair kits and a bunch more wooden grave decorations. And as I was slicing and dicing today's corpse, I realized a snake was visiting. I managed to save up five faith orbs, so I gave them to him. He told me I appear useless, but also harmless, which was quite frankly the most beautiful thing anyone's ever said to me. And he agreed to help me since he wants to get through the gate too. He gave me these instructions to the key. I needed to use this to research the key at the study table, but I was now fresh out of faith. So I had to wait until Sunday. I buried that body I'd been working on and placed down a few more decorations and repaired some others and boom, graveyard quality of 36. I tended my crops once again, check out this growing pile of maggots. And then I chopped and crafted before making a mess of yet another corpse. I don't know why I was being so lazy, but I gave up and left it to rot with the other two. I then crafted some hemp rope. Okay, we've made a discovery. We made a very interesting discovery. Crafting hemp gives me blue science points. Up until this point, I'd assumed the only way to get blue points was through study, but it turns out crafting spiritual related items gives blue points too. This was groundbreaking news. My tech was no longer gated behind faith accumulation. I unlocked light of faith and had enough beeswax to craft two candles. And these gave me two blue points each. I also placed two candelabra in the church, bringing its quality up to 11. I unlocked ceramic firing, made a bunch of bowls and put them in the furnace to make some ceramic jugs, hoping they'd give me blue points. I bought some more hemp seeds from Dig so I can make some more rope. And I bought milk and eggs and also some feathers in case I need them so that I can make myself cake because cake gives a buff that increases the amount of blue points you get from studying stuff. I made a bunch of pastry dough and had enough ingredients to cook eight cakes. And unfortunately the ceramic jugs only gave red points. So that was a miss. Sunday rolled around and I showed the Bishop the excellent quality of the graveyard. And he said he was no longer disgusted by it. So that was great news. My sermon earned me four faith again this week. So I ate some cake and did some study. I studied the key first, which earned me an active key. I then studied a skull and all up I now had 31 blue points. I unlocked glass blower and advanced smelting. I collected a bunch of materials, made a level two furnace and crafted a bunch of conical flasks. I made some ceramic funeral urns by chucking ash in those urns I made. And this at least earned me three blue points. And then I studied some fat and got back up to 34 blue points total. Oh, even these are giving me blue. Oh, that is great news. That is wonderful news. And that discovery there marked the end of my blue points woes. Conical flasks are super easy to make. You just need river sand of which I have an infinite supply and furnaces to make the glass and flasks. And so I decided to make yet another furnace so that I could ramp up production. And I unlocked glass blower rank two so I could begin making advanced conical flasks too. Snake had showed up, so I gave him the key. He unlocked the gate and started ranting about how he was gonna get revenge on everyone. And I wandered into this room to find the diary for the astrologer and what? Before revisiting the site of my untimely demise, I did some random chores. I unlocked weapons, made some more hemp rope, and then realized a body hadn't been delivered for a few days and figured that must be because the morgue was full. So I buried one body, made myself an improved sword and crafted some advanced conical flasks and then burned the other two bodies. After a day of crafting, another body arrived and I decided to unlock the gentle butcher perk, which makes surgical mistakes less likely. And then I managed to get this corpse to five white skulls before burying it. I also made a trunk down at the crematorium to make burning bodies as convenient as possible. I then made use of some of those flasks and made an alchemy workbench where I can mix two substances to create potions, but I had no idea what was going on. The alchemy in this game was definitely a job for Google, but for now I bailed and finally went to investigate the site of my earlier death. Snake was amazed to see me and was outraged to discover that someone as useless as me was gifted with immortality. But then he calmed down and realized I could be of use to him. He revealed there's a dangerous dungeon down the stairs behind him and asked me to go down and collect a bucket bucket of blood and five bloody nails for him. And if I did that, he'd help me. Bucket of blood, bloody nails, what could go wrong? I found this creature Gunter back here too. And he asked me to hit him in the face because he just wanted to feel something. And then he told me he's a zombie and that zombies used to help his old master. He also told me where I could dig one up. I found the blueprint for a resurrection table and some zombie juice too. The dawn of an undead age had begun. Although bear with me, it takes me a while to figure out how the heck zombies work, but I do get there eventually. I then grabbed the diary from this room 
being careful not to step on the Bernie Bernie thing this time. Conveniently, it was Blue Crescent Moon Day, so I headed to visit the astrologer. I gave him the diary and he discovered that the portal home could be made if I created two parts, an emitter and a barrel, and these would assemble into a spirit laser. But first I needed to restore the diary so he could find out more info, so I needed acid and restoration tools. He also suggested I investigate the portal itself to search for more clues. I buried today's body, tended the crops, and kept the conical flask production moving, and on day 55 I gave yet another banger of a sermon, earning four more faith. I ate some cake and used these to study intestines and skin, and earned a whopping 72 blue points. I unlocked gardening to improve my farming skills, and stone cutter too. This allowed me to make some polished stones, with which I made an alchemy mill. I also made a hand mixer. These machines break stuff down into alchemy ingredients. I milled some intestines and got life powder, and I hand mixed some fat and got slowing solution. Fair enough. I then had a little dive into snakes dungeons. There were bats and slimes and lots of pots and barrels that I could destroy, and these held a bunch of goodies including various seeds, metal parts, and best of all, health potions. I was very confused by alchemy, so this was great news. I now had the health potion I needed for the witch's quest without having to mix it myself. I didn't find any bloody nails or buckets of blood for snake though, although I did only clear two levels before heading out, as I felt like I had too many other things I should be doing. I tended to my crops and dealt with the two bodies that had piled up while I was busy, and then headed to dig up a long lost zombie. But this zombie didn't seem to be very animated. I took him to the autopsy table and found he was an 8% efficient zombie but I didn't know what to do with him. I thought maybe I had to resurrect him somehow and get him moving, so I left him for now and buried today's corpse. I headed around the spiral maze out to the witch hut, and once there I built this bridge to make access easier in the future, and then I gave the witch her health potion. This helped her remember that she is indeed Clotho the witch. I bought an alchemy recipe for rage potions, I'm not sure why, as well as two berry bush and one apple tree seeds from her. I also asked her for help with the merchant's lost taste situation, and she taught me the recipe for spices, which will cure him. I realized I now had a bunch of zombie tech options in my research trees. I researched second chance, unlocking the resurrection table. I built one, but I couldn't place this zombie's lifeless body on it. I could, however, place the fresh corpse that had just been delivered on it. And I discovered I needed one zombie juice and 10 faith to resurrect. And this is when I decided I really needed to up my sermon game, because if I was gonna get a zombie army, it was gonna cost heaps of faith. But what to do with this floppy zombie? I didn't have a clue, so I plonked him down here for now. I planted my berry and apple trees, buried another body, and tended my crops before calling on almighty Google to teach me how to make black paint. I learned that oil and ash would do the trick, and so I made a bunch of black paint, and then made ink, and then made a pen and ink, and suddenly I was able to write. I made a bunch of bronze star notes, three of which combine into bronze star chapters, and with this I'll be able to craft better prayers once I have five faith. I gave this week's sermon, and unfortunately only received the usual four faith, so I'll have to wait another week. And then I crafted all the notes and chapters I could, as well as ten flyers to give to the Inquisitor. I made the painful decision to use one faith to research cabbage, but I needed to in order to learn how to extract health solution from it, which I used to make spice for the merchant's tastelessness problem. I also grabbed some ink and paper to give to the poet in the tavern. I then ducked into Witch's Hill to check out the portal, and found it was under guard by the Inquisition. They'd heard someone was sniffing about trying to dig up old cultist magic. That was me, I'm sorry about that. And so they were here to shoo away any ditherers. This meant I couldn't have a look at the portal for clues, so the task to get rid of these guards was added to my journal. I gave the merchant his spice, and he he sprinkled on a grasshopper to eat, which was very strange behavior, but it worked. His taste returned and he was so impressed he asked me to cook him five gold star dinners so that he could show them to his royal friends. I also gave the paper and ink to the poet, and this unlocked the ability to trade silver quality wine for silver quality stories, which is a pretty good deal as I need these to craft notes and chapters. I sold the seven burial certificates I'd accumulated and bought a silver wine, which I traded for a story and it turned out this was a repeatable quest, so I now had an easy access to stories if I needed them. I crafted up a storm and placed a confessional and church shrine down in the church, bringing the quality up to 21. I gave Jerry his wine finally, which he said wasn't as strong as he'd hoped for and only made him more depressed. And then I burned another body and collected a bunch more sand to keep the conical flask production up. And on day 65, I finally brought the Inquisitor his firewood and flyers. He was pleased, but many of his fans were bored of the witch burning spectacle and they left early. This disappointed the Inquisitor and he admitted the guards were having trouble finding witches and they needed more motivation. 
information. So he wanted me to collect him 10 silver star wine as he believed this would fuel his guard's passion. He also gave me permission to use the vineyard on Witch's Hill. And he gave me permission to use the left side of the graveyard at the church as well. I bought some seeds from the farmer and I sold my abundance of carrot cutlets to the tavern to make a little extra cash. I planted all the seeds, baked some more cakes and had my first orchard harvest before greeting the bishop who was pleased to see the church was now above 20 quality. He still wanted his fish before he'd consider letting me upgrade the church though. Silly hungry bishop. I gave my sermon and found there was a way bigger crowd and I earned six faith instead of two. The only thing that had changed was the decoration score of the church. And this is when I properly realized that church quality actually had a huge impact on faith gain. I crafted the prayer for faith as this will give 50% extra faith plus one rather than a flat plus two faith like the casual prayer I've been using. I then began experimenting how to make some extra money. I made some berry juice, fish soup, and one of each iron tool and headed into town. The tavern keep didn't want my berry juice, but he bought my fish soup, but only for one silver. And the blacksmith wasn't interested in my tools at all, though I only had tier one of his shop unlocked, so perhaps he would have bought them if I had access to higher tiers. After that failed money-making experiment, I took comfort in the steady supply of burial certificates, my only reliable source of income. I unlocked Illumination of Faith and Price of Faith, giving me a perk that means my services will earn more money. Very nice, I love a profitable church. And also some more church decorations, which I wasn't able to make just yet, especially not the stained glass windows, which need flame and gold jewelry. I discovered the merchant sells silver star grape seeds, so I bought some. I quickly buried a one red and seven white skull body and then planted the grapes. Wine production, here I come. I was having some storage woes, so I made three more trunks for my yard and then headed to this fishing spot up here where I caught a bunch of bronze and silver quality bream. I also grabbed a bunch of coal for fuel while I was up there and then sliced up my fish into fillets. Since these were high quality fish, I got higher quality fillets. Four for the bishop and four for that baron dude that gave me a quest like 70 days ago. I collected a ridiculous pile of sand to keep up with conical flask production, tended to my crops, which I'd been ignoring for a while and dealt with the three bodies that had piled up near the morgue. Day 73 was a Sunday. So I gave the bishop his fish and he was blasphemously grateful and he agreed to upgrade the church. However, I had to buy a building permit from the box for 20 20 silver first. While investigating this, I realized I had access to some rightful citizens papers and a town pass. So that was cool. I gave this week's sermon with my improved prayer and got seven faith and about two and a half silver. So that was an improvement. And I quickly ran into town and sold some burial papers as well as some carrot cutlets and managed to get 20 silver with which I bought the permission papers and had the church upgraded. This basically made it a bit bigger and fancier with more space for me to place decorations and improve the quality. The bishop said he dreams of building a cathedral here, but he needs me to get the graveyard quality all the way up to 200 and the church quality above 50. So I had my work cut out for me. I then wandered out to give the Baron his fishies and he gave me some kebab recipes in return. Nice one, Baron. By the way, this is what it looks like collecting from my furnaces after being away for a while. I harvested and replanted my grapes and as day 74 dawned, I gathered the materials to improve my church. I placed four wall candelabra, four candelabra on stands and then another shrine. And this increased the quality all the way up to 42. I attempted to resurrect this corpse as I now had enough faith, but the resurrection table said it was too rotten. And so I settled for burying this corpse. I ran into town and bought some gold star onion rings to use for the gold star dinners the merchant wants. And then I rushed home because a fresh corpse had arrived. All right. <laughs> Wait. Yeah, so this zombie was behaving exactly like my other zombie. And so it was time to figure out what the heck was going on. Why were all my zombies sleeping? And so I unlocked a zombie wood cutting and built a big old sawmill. Oh. He's doing his thing. It turns out my zombie was ready to go the whole time. He just lay there like an idiot until he was assigned a task. Oh well, I now had two zombies to work with. I gathered some materials, buried another body, the first on the left side of the church, which was quite a milestone, and then headed up to the zombie mines. I'd unlocked zombie mining and logistics. So I made the left and right mining station for the gaseous iron slash coal mine, where I put this bloke to work collecting giant chunks of iron, which was great news because I was running very low on the swamp iron I'd collected earlier. And I built this fella up porter station where he stood awaiting materials to grab and bring back to base. Go well, my undead slaves, bring me iron. I'd collected 10 bees at this point, so I made a beehive. I buried a body, tended to my crops, and on day 79, I gave my first sermon in my glorious new church. And thanks to all the improvements I'd made, I earned an enormous 13 faith, more than enough for yet another zombie. I spied to the combo prayer in the desk options. This provided both a faith and money bonus at my church services, but it required a whole dang book to craft. So I unlocked books, 
crafted a soft cover and made myself one. It gives all the benefits of the faith prayer that I've been using, as well as a 50% increase to the money earned. So that seemed good to me. I placed another church shrine down, which brought the church quality up to 47, and then figured it was time to pick up winemaking. And I unlocked simple fertilizers too. I checked out the wine press and barrel recipes, but I was fresh out of iron. So I went to check up on my zombie bros. Old mate had managed to dig up some iron, but production was at a halt due to a lack of an iron ore stockpile, which I hadn't realized I'd need to build. So I built one at base and another one at their end. There he goes, he's off. Look at my guy go. He's beautiful. He's beautiful. I'm so happy there's this zombie automation mechanic. It's so good, it's genius. Those chunks of iron break down into five iron ore, by the way, not too bad. I then made like a billion hemp rope and then used old mate Google to work out I needed to study maggots, which I could then break down into life solution, which I could then mix with ash to make growth enhancer, which I could mix with peat to make quality fertilizer. And you can see why I needed Google's help. I headed into town and bought five silver star baked salmon, which I used with the gold star onion rings and cake to make dinners with a 97% chance to get a gold star. And somehow I got bitterly trolled and the last one I made came in with a 3% chance silver star. Extremely rude behavior. So I ducked back into town and bought some more onion rings and salmon and made my fifth gold star dinner for the merchant. A couple of bodies had piled up, so I buried one, butchered and burnt the other. And then Sunday had rolled around, so I used my combo prayer for the first time. And it gave 13 faith as expected, but it didn't seem to give that much more money. I headed out to collect some stone and discovered this big rock here actually gives infinite chunks of stone, which was excellent news as I was running low on little rocks to pickaxe. I made myself a wine press and barrel and I harvested my grapes and replanted with quality fertilizer. And with that harvest, I had enough to make one pail of grape juice, but I need two pails to make wine. So I wasn't quite able to make wine for the inquisitor just yet. I then went on a rampage and unlocked eight or so anatomy and alchemy researchers, including a bunch of embalming stuff and another surgery perk to further decrease the chance of botched surgeries. I had a peek at all the embalming injections I could craft and it was another case of, I have no idea what the heck is going on. I continued my tech spending spree and unlocked a bunch of stuff in the Smith and building trees, including steel, iron castings, access to new minerals, and a higher tier carpenter's workbench. I built a stone cutter level two and then resurrected zombie number three, and this fella had 12% efficiency. I ran him up north and put him in the iron mines too. And while there, I discovered another blockage. It looked like zombie one had dug up coal and it had nowhere to go. But before dealing with that, I quickly ducked into town and gave the merchant his five gold star dinners. I also bought some silver star grapes from him, as well as six silk. I then returned to the zombie outpost and built a stone stockpile, but that didn't solve the issue. So I tried a trunk and sure enough, the coal was transferred into it. With that blockage now solved, I expected to see a glorious bounty of iron flowing from the hills. On day 88, I burned one corpse and buried another and then crafted through the night so that I could make a carpenter's workbench level two. I was still a bit starved for metal, so it was a bit of a struggle, but I eventually crafted enough jointings to install two soft church benches. These also made use of the silk I'd bought from the merchant. And now my church quality was up to 51. Next in my sights was the quality of the graveyard. And so I unlocked stone gravestones and I knew I was going to need a buttload of stone. So I created this glorious conga line of stone chunks. I was delighted to find that each stone grave fence or gravestone I made gave an enormous five blue tech points at the cost of a measly couple of stone. And so I immediately ceased making infinite conical flasks and decided this would be my blue points method from now on. And with my first load of decorations, I increased the graveyard quality from 29 to 60, just like that. I showed off my new 50 plus church interior to the bishop and then then I unleashed an absolute beauty of a sermon and earned a whopping 16 faith and almost five silver. I harvested my grapes and thanks to the fertilizer I'd used, I received two gold star grapes and two gold star grape seeds. Very nice. I now had enough for my second pail of grape juice. So I crafted that and then chucked two pails into the barrel to turn into wine. It said I have a 50% chance of producing silver quality wine. So fingers crossed that happens as that's the quality the Inquisitor is expecting. I placed some coal into a furnace to create graphite and then got back to the stone pushing silver willies and place down a bunch more grave fences before resurrecting zombie number four. I managed to get this one up to seven white skulls and this gave him an 18% work efficiency. So I guess efficiency correlates to corpse quality, which makes sense. Since this was my most efficient zombie, I took him up to replace one of the noobs in the mines as I wanted my iron collection to be as quick as possible. I put the reject zombie on the big tree for now. Have I mentioned how fun it is bossing zombies around? I then got back to my stone shenanigans and with this batch, the quality shot up to 95. I mixed some graphite with iron in this furnace to begin 
smelting my first steel bars. And when I was breaking down an iron chunk, I was pleased to find a couple of silver nuggets popped out. So I was now beginning to accumulate some precious metals. I resurrected zombie number five, and unfortunately he had pretty crappy stats, only 8% efficiency. I built two zombie spots at the stone quarry and placed him on one, and also grabbed old mate from the sawmill and placed him on the other side. So now I'll have plenty of stone coming in for infinite blue points crafting grave decor. Speaking of, I then got back to business crafting headstones, reaching a graveyard quality of 118. I collected my wine and was pleased to find it of silver star quality. I upgraded my anvil to rank three and put on some steel parts to craft and then paid the inquisitor a visit. He was pleased with the quality of the wine and my friendship with him was raised to 50. I asked him how business was and his answer in short was not so good. He decided he needed some snacks to attract people back to the spectacle of a good old witch burning, which makes sense to me, everybody does love snacks. And so he tasked me with creating a snack stand that would sell beer and burgers. He said I could keep the profit, so frankly I thought it was an ingenious plan. I unlocked the brewing stand research, but didn't look into it just yet as I was hoping to hit 200 graveyard quality before the bishop showed up. And so I was back to my business of crafting copious amounts of stone grave decorations. But when Sunday was almost upon me and I'd only hit 141 points, I gave up until next week and decided to build a brewing stand. And I discovered I was going to need hops, except I wasn't sure where to get hop seeds. I also unlocked tricks of the trade and engineer, which gave me a few handy perks to make crafting yield better results. And then I headed over to the church. I hadn't reached 200 points yet, but the bishop was still thoroughly impressed by my stonework. In fact, he was so impressed that an idea formed in his tiny brain. He commissioned me to make three gold star marble statues of him. One for his office, one for his soup kitchen, and one for the front of the church. That seems like a perfectly normal and reasonable request to me. I gave my sermon, earned a spicy 15 faith and almost 10 silver. I actually don't know why the silver was so much more this week, but I didn't argue. I then crafted a preparation place too, fridge pallet, and embalming table too. The embalming table lets me inject crap into the corpses, I guess. The fridge pallet stores corpses and stops them from rotting, obviously. And the prep table too seemed the same to me, so maybe I needed to unlock further tech to make the proper use of it. I harvested and replanted my grapes, and some of the replant was actually gold star. And on day 98, I did some choice googling and worked out that the miller sells hop seeds, but I found I was only at tier one with him, and I needed tier three to buy silver quality hop seeds. I sold eight burial certificates and 10 silver wine and earned 23 silver. The 10 wine actually sold for 11 silver and 10 copper. So that might actually be a decent money-making venture after all this time. Anyway, I then went home and started making a billion flour to sell to the miller so I can hopefully unlock his higher tiers. But a dead body arrived, so I made zombie number six, another 18% efficiency zombie. I researched zombie farming and built this zombie farm, which looks glorious, but it's kind of inefficient as it used up nine tiles, but farms only six. The benefit, of course, is that it's automated. I then got back to making tons of flour. I sold a bunch to the miller and it worked. Tier two will be available tomorrow. I bought some silver star pumpkin seeds and a bunch of carrot seeds from old McDonald and then finally built the buffet and discovered that I'll need to provide gold star beers and burgers. So that will present a bit of a challenge as I'll need gold hops for the beer and gold onions for the burgers. I planted 24 carrots in the zombie farm and put zombie six to work. I planted the pumpkins too and then found my stone pile was overflowing. Good job, zombie mine. So I processed it all. And on day 100, I upgraded the zombie farm to rank two using 12 fertilizer. I sliced some human meat and put it on to cook in preparation for burgers. I made some more zombie juice so I could resurrect zombie number seven and I whacked him on the big tree to chop away. And with that, I had played my first 100 days of Graveyard Keeper. On day 101, I got to correcting some of the silly willies from my first 100 days. I had like a billion comments saying, get the teleport stone. How did you not get the teleport stone? Get the flaming teleport stone, you dingus. And so I bought the teleport stone from the Dead Horse Tavern. I can go to the tavern, I can go to the lighthouse, I can go to the quarry. Oh my lord. Oh, that is so good. That is so good. How did I not have this the whole time? This thing changed my life, as it's got a very short cooldown and it saves a whole lot of running around like a goose on the loose. A body arrives, so I dealt with that, ending up with a seven white skull corpse after the removal of blood and fat. Very delicious. And then it was time to correct another oversight. Somehow it took me 102 days to notice this chute that slides bodies straight into the morgue. So I repaired both sides and finally Mr. Donkey had a slippery dip to slide the juicy corpses down. I made a mortuary rack, so I finally had some storage in the morgue too. I then harvested and replanted grapes at my vineyard using quality fertilizer, which means the silver star crops will yield some gold star seeds in return, which is how you level up the quality of your harvests over time. My goal was to get a thriving gold star vineyard going as soon as possible. And then another body arrived. So the body has disappeared into the chute and just flopped out here.
How convenient. By the way, that was my 50th buried body, a wonderful milestone in any young man's life. I then squished out my first pail of gold star grape juice, and I put two pails in the barrel to ferment into wine. One thing that a bunch of people commented is that the increase in graveyard quality actually increases the amount of money that people give at the church service. So I'm just gonna get it as high as possible. A few choice gravestones and fences raised the quality from 139 to 162 just like that. I also discovered the confessional sometimes gives me faith and a story, which was a nice bonus. Many of you also commented telling me to actually place candles in the candelabra rather than leaving them empty, which I really should have worked out on my own, but I am a goose. I managed to make 28 of these yellow candles with resources I had on hand, and they provided plus one quality to the church each, which was very juicy. All right, this is gonna be a 69, 69 quality sermon. <laughs> 22 faith. Let's go. The fellas really did agree that it was a great sermon. I also got over 10 silver in donations. I then decided I should probably clear all this crap out of the graveyard. So I got to digging and chopping until my tools broke and I left behind about 300 logs. On day 104, I processed some chunks of iron and stone at the stone cutter, chucked some iron onto smelt and tidied up my chest situation a bit because we love a tidy chest situation. I then wandered into the church and discovered all those candles I'd lit were already out. So lighting candles is a weekly affair, I guess, which makes sense. I finished clearing the graveyard although I didn't clear it of the 3,000 logs. And then another body arrived, so I made some more zombie juice out of health powder and blood and resurrected zombie number eight. I managed to get him to six white skulls, making him 15% efficient, which means he does tasks at 15% of the speed at which I do tasks, which is not bad for a bloke who's dead. Anyway, I unlocked marble quarrying and zombie quarrying tier two, and then crafted a bunch of materials with which I built two zombie workstations at the marble quarry, as well as an extra porter station. I plonked the fresh zombie on to collect me some marble. I then teleported back home and resurrected zombie zombie number nine, another 15% efficient slave, and I placed him on the other side of the marble quarry. And just like that, I had marble flowing from the hills, along with iron and stone. Oh, uh, this is where the infinite iron thing is. This is what I missed the whole time. This discovery is also thanks to the comment section, another thing I missed in the first 100 days. And it was good to know I could always grab some cheeky chunks of iron in a pinch. I harvested and replanted my crops and then began a quest towards some alchemy brilliance, which began by researching hemp so that I can break it down into acceleration powder. But then I ran out of faith, so I had to bench that quest for the time being. I instead sold some silver star wine to the tavern for about 18 silver and dealt with the day's juicy corpse. I spent the rest of the night for flowers because I wanted to find as many moths as possible. And as day 107 dawned, I harvested and replanted grapes, placed down some more trellises in preparation for a grape empire expansion and put some more grape juice into ferment. I buried yet another body, had a pretty hefty crafting sesh, built a scroll rack for additional storage below the church and then went on another moth collecting quest. While out, I discovered my faithful tree chop zombie had totally filled up the log stockpile, which had halted work. So I took a few out and chucked them on the ground and he got back to it. Like the video and subscribe if you believe Mr. Mr. Undead Lumberjack is a great worker who deserves employee of the month. I managed to collect 21 moths in total and suddenly it was Sunday again. So I made some more candles, but I was extremely low on beeswax. I did however have some candles left over from last week. So I managed to get most of the candelabra looking fancy and I received 20 faith for my efforts. I immediately put these to work researching moths and bat wings as it was time for my alchemy genius to shine. And when I say alchemy genius, I mean, I looked up a sweet recipe on Google. I milled a bunch of hemp into acceleration powder, mixed a bunch of moths into chaos solution and then realized I didn't have an alchemy workbench tier two yet. So my plans were thwarted yet again. I crafted some jointings, put on some steel parts to smelt using steel ingots and ceramic bowls and kept myself busy while I waited for the steel parts to be ready. Once they were, I headed back down, removed my alchemy workbench tier one and replaced it with a tier two workbench. And finally I could craft the potion of my dreams, the speed potion. I made a stack of 20 and then I logged out for a while. And when I came back, I totally forgot I had them. So I did some random chores, but eventually Eventually, I remembered. Oh yeah, we got the speed potion going, baby. Look at me go. <laughs> so fast. As you can see, the extreme speed pleased me greatly. And now between my Usain Bolt athleticism and the teleport stone, I was ready to zoom around the world and be a productivity guru, which is a big improvement from the first 100 days where I just ran around like a slow idiot the whole time. I then ground a bunch of wheat into flour before speed car racing over to the miller. Can we go? 
Look at me zoom. I bought all the flour he had in stock and then sold it all back to him along with the flour I just milled. And this unlocks tier three of his vendor options, which will be available tomorrow. This will let me purchase gold star hop seeds, which I can use to get gold star hops for gold star beer. I also bought some silver star onion and lentil seeds from old McDonald. I zoomed up to Witch Hill for no particular reason. I think I just like zooming to be honest. And then I planted my onion seeds with fertilizer, hoping to work towards some gold star onions, which I'll need to make gold star burgers for the Inquisitor's snack stand along with the beer. I suddenly realized old mate communist donkey hadn't delivered me a body for a while. And sure enough, his carrot crate was fresh out. So I grabbed some of the carrots my zombie farm had faithfully yielded me and chucked them in. I harvested and replanted at the vineyard, chucked some more wine on, which I guess goes without saying, I'm always making wine, and then ran to the miller and bought my first gold star hop seed. He only had one in stock though, the silly goose. So I grabbed eight bronze star seeds too, which I immediately planted with quality fertilizer. I then realized destroying my tier one alchemy workbench was a mistake. As you can only craft three ingredient recipes at the tier two workbench. So I made myself another one. I unlocked beekeeper, which lets me collect more honey and then went on a bee and moth collection rampage until dawn. I unlocked complex fertilizers, granting the quality fertilizer tier two recipe. I tended to my crops, dealt with another body and I also unlocked the marble gravestones research. This allowed me to make marble grave fences with just two marble. So I hoped these would give some juicy blue tech points since stone fences give five each. But for some reason, they only gave red points. This was disappointing, but they do give plus four quality. So I placed a bunch and managed to raise the graveyard quality to 202. Whoa, what the heck? Why? He's damaging everything. Yeah, so Yorick the ghost went off his noodle because he was angry about the red skull bodies in the graveyard. And apparently he was Thor before he died because he unleashed a bunch of lightning bolts, which damaged some of my grave decorations. This was rather inconvenient as it tanked my graveyard quality back down to 183. I quickly repaired and replaced the broken decorations and scraped my way back up to 207 just in time for the bishop's arrival. I turned in my quest to get the graveyard up to 200 quality and the bishop was pleased, but I still owed him three gold star statues of himself before he'd be ready to upgrade the church to a cathedral. I'd only managed to collect five beeswax since last Sunday, so I crafted a whopping eight candles, which I placed and received 18 faith for my sermon. I also got about 13 and a half silver, thanks to the recent increase in graveyard quality. I crafted the stories I'd accumulated into notes and chapters, as these give me some handy blue points. And then I finally remembered that I have like 300 quests I should be doing, so I decided to pay Miss Charm a visit. She insulted me like 100 days ago, so I used five faith to muster up the confidence to demand an apology and insist that I'm not a small man. She was impressed and I earned myself 10 friendship points and I was able to ask her about Snake. She clearly wasn't the biggest fan of the bloke as she asked me to throw some fake coins in his face and see how he reacts. I then gave the poet a bunch of silver star wine in return for which he gave me a bunch of silver star stories until he got annoyed at me for claiming all his best work and told me to go away. I managed to get five stories total. I bought some more gold hop seeds from the miller and this time he had six in stock. I also bought five gold star hops and I bought one silver star pumpkin from the farmer. I I collected some water, grabbed some wheat I had lying around and put my first gold star beer on to ferment. Another body arrived, so I zombified it. Zombie number 10. Oh, hey. Excellent. There you go. This discovery was thanks to another commenter who mentioned you can actually put zombies to work on most machines. I put a bunch more steel onto smelt, planted my hop seeds and harvested and replanted grapes. And I was now up to 17 gold star grape seeds. So the journey towards gold star wine was looking positive. The merchant was visiting today. So I bought a trade license for 50 silver and headed into town to give it to him. And so began our startup business venture, Graveyard Veggies. Yo, I didn't know we we're gonna get a whole office. Crates of goods. Every, okay, so he's still gonna show up on the same day and he'll take crates of goods. To begin with, I could only sell one crate at a time and it looked like each crate would net me around 15 silver depending on what I filled it with. So finally, I had a reliable money-making option. I resurrected zombie number 11 and chucked him into the porter station up here so he'll cart home infinite logs for me. Day 118 was Snake's day to visit. So I gave him the fake coins Miss Charm gave me and he just said it was a joke and then essentially called me a simp. How rude. I made a couple more trunks for the farm area because I had seeds and peat coming out my ears and and then buried another body. I then built the crate factory. This is where I can put together various crates of goods to sell through the business with the merchant. I can do boxes of various quality vegetables or boxes of goods filled with anything from nails to ceramic jugs. Nails sounded like an easy option to me. So I put Mr. Zombie on to craft a bunch. I then cooked eight gold star human meat burgers using the gold star onions I'd managed to farm. All right, so now I've got eight gold star burgers and 10 gold star beers. I think that might be enough. It was witch burning day. So I was able to test my theory and I did indeed have enough. 
off. I served up the 10 beer and five burgers and the Inquisitor was very impressed. <laughs> I'm serving, <laughs> I'm in the, <laughs> I'm in the little buffet stand serving all these nerds beer. <laughs> Let's go. Beer washes away all sins. Well said. The best burning he's ever been to. Bunch of cannibals. Bunch of cannibals they don't even know. I received four faith and 33 silver for my glorious efforts serving beer and burgers. So that was by far my most profitable endeavor to date. I then checked out the portal. A golden angle, an endless notebook, and a necklace for the barrel. I needed a salty fork, a mirror of pride. I'm pretty sure that's the bishops and the eternal burning coal, probably the blacksmith. I was pretty sure all of those items could be attained from various villages. So I just needed to keep following all the quest lines and I was confident I'd get the portal repaired eventually and I could go home to my love. By the way, by this point, I'd eaten all the carrot cutlets I'd cooked and had officially moved on to drinking wine as my sole method of energy regeneration. I literally never slept. I just let the alcohol fuel me. I harvested and replanted hops, planted some lentils and pumpkins too, and then crafted a crate of nails. Oh. Where did that go? It turns out an entire warehousing area had appeared downstairs, complete with a porter station for some choice zombie transport services. I then headed west out to the swamp to visit Clotho the witch. I gave her the silver star pumpkin she requested and she taught me some recipes in return. I also bought some apple and berry seeds, some acid for the astrologer's quest and 10 frogs for some reason. I planted all the berry and apple trees, but I gotta be honest, I barely bothered harvesting these because they didn't really seem to have any particularly exciting use. I harvested my onions and seven of them were gold star. So I made a bunch more more burgers before crafting myself a few more speed potions. Sunday had rolled around and yet again, I only had the beeswax to craft eight candles. So I earned myself another 20 faith for this week's service. Apparently I'd forgotten about yet another corpse and I wanted to resurrect it, but unfortunately it was too rotten. So I settled for burying this stinky corpse in the graveyard. I then headed into the Dead Horse Tavern. Radrick had heard about the extremely delicious beer I'd served at the witch burning. And so I agreed to bring him some. I returned home, grabbed a gold star beer and then returned to give it to him. And he was blown away. He was so impressed that he decided to give me his recipe for mead. This can be made in the brewing stand too, but obviously uses honey instead of wheat. Miss Charm then arrived back for a weekly visit to the tavern, so I informed her that Snake said the whole fake money thing was just a joke. This made her very angry. Apparently she had paid Snake to get her necklace back, a special necklace that was a gift from her mother. And he had taken her money, but never followed through on the task. She said I was strong and intelligent and asked for my help harassing Snake to get him to do his job. Frankly, that is precisely the type of flattery that works on me, so I'll definitely be having a chat with Snake when he next visits. I bought eight more hop seeds from the miller, a bunch of seeds from the farmer, and made a point of planting all the wheat I could immediately, as I need heaps of wheat to make more beer. A fresh corpse slippery dipped down the chute, so I resurrected zombie number 12 and put him to work sawing some wood. On day 123, I bought 12 silk and eight gold star grape seeds from the merchant, and then figured I'd better actually transport that crate of goods over to the warehouse. It just sat there on the pallet, so I wasn't sure if I'd missed my chance or if it'd disappear at the end of the day, so I left it for now and headed to crafts some planks and jointings before being distracted by yet another body. I resurrected this one too. That makes zombie number 13. Except I had more zombies than I knew what to do with. So as you can see, I had a temporary zombie pile up happening. I made a couple of crates of nails and then decided to take one of the zombies downstairs to be my crate carrier. <laughs> Off you go, fella. Off you go. So the crate operation was now in full swing. Very nice. Snake was back, so I asked him about Miss Charm's necklace. And he got flustered and said he knows where the necklace is, but he refused to explain why he couldn't get it. So I needed to earn his trust before he'll explain further. I made some flyers and used them to launch two marketing campaigns for Graveyard Veggies. Have I mentioned that Graveyard Veggies is a banger company name? All those flyers raised the fame up to three. I then destroyed all the crappy one quality pews in the church and made four beautiful pews using the silk I'd bought from the merchant. And all up, this increased the base church quality by eight. It was then time to feed my unsuspecting customers some human flesh burgers, which they of course loved. And I earned myself 33 silver and four faith once again. Another body arrived and this one had pretty crappy stats. So I decided to burn it. I needed ash to craft fertilizer. So I was actually pretty happy to enjoy the riotous flames of cremation. Even better was the discovery that I randomly had 15 ash just sitting in this trunk. I turned a bunch of bat wings I had into clean paper and managed to make 80 more flyers with which I raised graveyard veggies fame up to 11, which allowed me to place the maximum 10 pallets down 
in the warehouse. This means I'll be able to sell up to 10 crates per week, which would earn me more than one gold each time. This was a very exciting prospect. I gave the astrologer the acid he requested, did some chores ranging from brewing beer to draining the blood from a body, and then gave my weekly sermon. I had zero candles this week, so it was an 18 faith kind of day. You might think it's stupid of me not to stay on top of the candle situation, and you'd probably be right, but you've got to remember this game has quick day-night cycles. It's only eight minutes per day, and there are about 3,000 things to stay on top of. That's my excuse anyway. I figured I'd better prepare some crates to fill up the 10 pellets, so I crafted more than 600 nails and had Zombie Bro whip up some crates of nails. I unlocked the Art of Stone tech, which lets me make the statues that the bishop commissioned from me. I then resurrected Zombie number 14 and plonked him down here for later. I needed a gold star chisel to make the statues, which was kind of a complicated process. Basically, I made some polishing paste, which I used to make a lens, which I used to make silver star chisels, which I then used to make gold star chisels. The statues themselves cost five faith each and only had an 80% chance of being gold star. So if I had have gotten unlucky, I would have cried. Fortunately for me, I came away with three gold star statues ready to give to our favorite vain bishop next time he visits. The merchant was in town, so I proudly informed him the business had cleared three fame. And he said that explained why the baker had given him a free pie this morning. I burned another fresh corpse and later that day, I collected one gold, 50 silver profit. That's the first time I've had over one gold. Let's go. I ordered the zombies to craft a billion more nails and 10 more nail crates ready for next week's sale day, and then crafted a whole bunch of stone grave fences, purely to earn a bunch of blue tech points. I unlocked zombie brewery and zombie winery, dealt with a body, ate some cake and researched this gravestone just to see how many blue points it got me, which was a fair bit, but probably not worth the cost of faith. I then made some more trunks in the yard and filled them with literally 30 gravestones, which I crafted to earn another 150 blue points. I also put a bunch of advanced conical flasks on because I figured why not earn some extra passive blue points. I bought a bunch more seeds from the farmer, some more hop seeds from the miller, and then served snacks at yet another friendly neighborhood witch burning. Business sure is good between the graveyard veggies and the witch burning cannibal burgers. I then placed down my first zombie vineyard, except I needed fertilizer to upgrade it in order to produce gold star grapes or hops, so I left it unused for now. I burned a body I'd let rot all the way down to 88%, whoops, and apologies to the family, and I got a little farming done, dealt with another fresh body, this one got the dignity of a proper burial, and then did even more farming. I was keeping carrots growing for the donkey, wheat growing for beer, hemp growing for various alchemy reagents and candles, and lentils, pumpkins, and onions growing because I can sell them in crates. It was quite the farming operation. Sunday had rolled around, so so I gave the bishop his three statues. He was impressed by his own cheekbones and he immediately placed one down right in front of the church. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. And with that, I was able to upgrade the church into a cathedral. But before we can host our grand ceremony, the bishop needed me to become an aristocrat, which means I'll have to buy papers that cost a whopping 12 gold. He also wanted me to invite someone important to the ceremony. I then randomly realized I can place flower beds around the graveyard, which increased the quality by two a pop. I also fixed the fence, which increased the quality by 10. I checked inside and the cathedral interior was only slightly bigger, with a little more room for decorations in the left wing over here. I unlocked superpower of faith and Shining of Faith, which will let me make improved shrines, confessionals, and candelabra. For now though, I quickly gave my weekly sermon, as Sunday was drawing to a close so I didn't have time to decorate any further. I then decided it was time I headed back into the dungeon under the church so that I could work towards completing Snake's quests. I was able to go straight to level three, which is where I got up to last time, and I found these funky flies that dropped various alchemy powders. Down on level four, I found these weirdos that lunged at me and made me poop my pants, but I managed to kill a few and they dropped bloody nails, which are what I needed for one of Snake's quests. I also found a silver vein, which was juicy. I fought some blue slimes on my way to level five, and once there, these flaming bats zoomed at me, and I was taking a fair bit of damage, but fortunately, wine restores health as well as energy. So that was another win for alcoholism. P.S. I am just joking, drink responsibly. Unless you happen to be a pixel art graveyard keeper, in which case I highly recommend you drink infinite wine. Anyway, I also found a gold vein, which was even more juicy. I fought my way through level five, killing every monster on the way, and on level six, I decided to head back to the surface. I headed straight into town to tell the merchant of my success selling more than seven crates. And with that, he was ready to discuss strategy with me. He said we needed help with our marketing from Miss Char, as she's a celebrity and quite influential with the Royals. Maybe I can convince her to do a sponsored Instagram post. I wandered home to deal with the growing pile of bodies and Jerry told me he considered me his friend, which warmed my heart. I resurrected zombie number 15 and buried the other body before heading back into town to collect my one gold 50 profit for the week. I crafted a bucket of blood and gave it to Snake, along with the bloody nails I collected from the dungeon. And suddenly he was ready for the summoning. Our old Chiquino Aparino. <laughs> he summoned a chicken. 
<laughs> I mean, I thought summoning a chicken was a glorious achievement, but Snake wasn't very happy with whoever sold him the summoning scroll, and he asked me for help finding the original book. I told him I knew the astrologer who has ties to the university, and I promised to pay him a visit. Now that Snake and I were better friends, I was able to ask about Miss Charm's necklace again. He said it was in the possession of the Lord of the Mountain Fort, and when I offered to help, he suggested I try talk to the hunchbacked servant, Kukul. He also gave me the restoration tools I need for the astrologer. And so that was a juicy day of progress for like three different quest lines. I did some chores and queued up a bunch of zombie crafting in the workyard and then resurrected zombie 16, who I also put to work crafting materials. I harvested and replanted at both my farm and vineyard before visiting the Inquisitor who was quite distressed. He suspected the king must be possessed as he'd been talking about absurd concepts like human rights. He'd even been so bold as to say that we're not allowed to burn people without evidence anymore. It sounds like this king has too many morals for his own good to be honest. The Inquisitor believed that if he had appropriate evidence of dark arts, the king would be forced to listen to him and witch burnings would resume. And he told me about an ancient curse causing people to have dark organs. And he asked me to collect a dark heart, brain and intestines from corpses. So yeah, that was a whirlwind of a conversation, but dark body parts isn't really any weirder than all the other nonsense that's been going on, so why not? I also asked the Inquisitor if he'd attend the bishop's ceremony at the cathedral, but he said he had no time for such nonsense and told me to try find someone from the royal court. And sadly, due to a lack of burning witches, I wasn't able to serve any cannibal burgers to unsuspecting dinguses, which was very sad. I headed home and dealt with another body. This one lacked any dark organs, unfortunately. And then on day 138, I paid the astrologer a visit. I gave him the restoration tools and he was able to fix up the diary enough to read that the barrel of the portal has three parts. The endless notebook, golden angle and necklace. I already knew that, but he at least informed me he knew where to get the angle and the necklace. Except he went off on a rant about his daughter that he had with his lost lover Esmeralda and he asked me to investigate where she might be. He suggested I might talk to the Baron to find out more. I also asked him about the book Snake was after and he told me he gave it to the lighthouse keeper who can't read but enjoys the pictures. The lighthouse keeper was missing in action for some reason so I I wandered off to chat with the Baron. He said he would tell me about Esmeralda, but only if I used my pool with the Inquisitor to free one of his people. I returned to the lighthouse and the lighthouse keeper had reappeared, so I asked him about the Necromonicon, and he said he'd give it to me if I gave him some maggots. So I headed home, grabbed some, and then traded them for Snake's prized book. I then crafted a bunch of polished stone and marble, as well as some carved stone, and then upgraded the graveyard fence to stone, which added another 10 quality, bringing the overall quality up to 293. I gave this week's sermon, tended to my crops, and then bought a few exhumation permissions, with which I dug up a bunch of bodies and repositioned some graves so they could place some more gardens. A couple of the bodies I dug up weren't worth reburying, so I just burnt those and then paid Miss Charm a visit. She was annoyed that Snake didn't have the necklace, but grateful that I was looking into it. And then she randomly asked me to try and get some perfume off Miss Chain. Miss Chain said she'd give me some perfume, but only if I gave her sister Clotho the witch some lunch. And she also wanted me to bring her 12 frogs. I researched Distillation Cube 2 and placed one down, and I also placed some more scroll shelves down because I need storage. I ate some cake and studied a heart and a brain, and then put a maggot into the distillation cube, which will produce life extract. I also studied red mushrooms, and then made a second distillation cube to speed up the process. I popped a heart in this one, as hearts produce life extract too. I briefly got distracted by a body, which I put in the fridge, and then I headed into town to collect some gold. This week I got a bit less, as I'd sold some silver vegetable crates, which aren't as profitable. Anyway, I returned and mixed a bunch of red mushrooms into toxic solution. I made a bunch of tier one quality fertilizer, and then used the material I'd spent ages collecting to make a flavor enhancer, which I used to make a bunch of tier two quality fertilizer. And with that, I was finally able to upgrade my zombie farm to tier three, so it can now grow gold star crops once I get the seeds. I also made a second zombie farm and upgraded it immediately. And then another body arrived. This one had my first dark organ, some nice purple intestines. I harvested them to give to the Inquisitor, buried the body, and then made a third zombie farm for some reason, even though I didn't really have enough zombies or seeds to use it just yet. I also built a second zombie vineyard and upgraded both of them to tier three. I immediately queued up a bunch of gold star grapes and hops, and it felt good to automate some high quality produce. Another body arrived, and this one had glorious purple intestines too, so I harvested them for science. Sunday rolled around, and I figured I'd try and increase the church quality, so I prepped some materials, placed a cheeky wall candelabra here, removed this shrine and confessional, and replaced them with two higher tier confessionals. I also carved some marble and placed down a stone shrine, which gave plus eight. And so, with a church quality of 73, I managed to earn 24 faith for this service. I 
unlocks jeweler and precious little things, as tier 3 candelabra and stained glass windows require gold jewelry details, so I figured I'd better work towards making some of those. I immediately made a jewelry table and unsurprisingly I was going to need some gold ingots, so I put my 10 gold nuggets on to smelt. I also unlocked miner, which makes finding rare metals more likely. I grabbed a bunch of grave decorations I had lying around and spruced up a few graves, bringing the graveyard quality up to 317. I then planted some onions with tier 2 quality fertilizer, hoping to yield lots of gold star seeds as I need 24 before I can grow them in a zombie farm. I then wandered over to the witch's hut and gave Clotho the picnic basket from her sister. And I also bought two frogs to add to the 10 I bought earlier. Another body arrived and this one had a dark heart, which I harvested for the Inquisitor. And after burying the body, I gave Miss Chain her 12 frogs and received some perfume in return. I gave the perfume to Miss Charm. Nice. Ooh, got a kiss. She then asked me to help her with a romantic story. I also asked her about the marketing and she said she thought Graveyard Veggies was a bad name, which quite frankly was very rude, but she was willing to help if I brought her some jewelry. I grabbed a gold star story, but when I returned, she had disappeared just like Batman does when you look away for two seconds. I don't know about you, but that's pretty suspicious. Maybe Miss Charm is Batman. Anyway, I guess I'll have to give it to her next week. I then went and found the hunchback Kukul chilling in the forest and asked him about the necklace. He said the commander would never buy a necklace, but his son might, except his son left two years ago. Well, that was very helpful. Thanks for nothing, you silly willy. The merchant was visiting on day 147, so I bought a diamond off him as well as some grape seeds. I crafted some gold jewelry details, which took agonizingly long for some reason, and then crafted some jewelry ready for Miss Charm next time she shows up. I decided to steal this zombie from the crate factory and put him to work farming wheat. And then I concocted a bunch more speed potions. I then delivered my good lunatic friend Snake his Necromonicon. And it turned out the ritual for whoever he was trying to summon was a bit more complicated than the chicken one. And he needed me to fill up the area with outrageous Halloween decorations. I need <laughs> crucified skeleton, blood fountain, skulls in the wall. Okay. So I need a bunch of skulls. I don't have many skulls. I found I had 11 skulls lying around and I was scrounging together some other materials when a body showed up, which was convenient because that meant I now had skull number 12. I continued crafting materials and as day 149 dawned, I managed to place a nice selection of crucified pumpkins, two rather ominous fountains and some skulls in the wall. The fountains needed 10 blood each to function properly. And I unfortunately only had 16 blood handy, so I only got one working. But even that was enough to make a grown man raise his eyebrows slightly in terror. This is looking good so far. Definitely the a place I'd love to hang out. I'd managed to get the quality of this charming area up to 14. I just need some more skulls and blood to finish the job. The Inquisitor was chilling on Witch Hill, so I asked him about releasing Esmeralda. He told me it's not in his nature to release people, but since we were such bros, he would make an exception. I also gave him a dark heart and intestines, but unfortunately I hadn't yet found a dark brain, so that quest was left as yet unfinished. I let the Baron know his friend was free, and I asked him about his sister Esmeralda. He told me she was sadly long dead and gone. So I asked about her daughter, and he told me she'd sold a family family heirloom and disgraced her mother's memory. That's a wild twist. The wildest of twists. That's right, in the twist of the century, it turns out the astrologer's long lost daughter is none other than Miss Charm. Another body arrived, so I made sure to yoink its blood and its skull. And then I sang the most beautiful song ever to grace your earballs. Yet another zombie. Another zombie. Another zombie. Uh, good stuff, good stuff. I don't know what I'm gonna do with you. This was zombie number 17, by the way. I had him craft some nails. I continued planting a bunch of silver star pumpkins, lentils, and onions with tier two quality fertilizer, and then headed to chat with the astrologer. I informed him that his daughter is Miss Charm, and he was delighted yet dismayed, convinced she would never give him a chance after he abandoned her all those years ago. I promised to chat to her and test the waters. I collected some gold, resurrected zombie number 18, and queued up some stuff for him to saw. I made a third zombie vineyard and queued up a bunch of gold star grapes. And as you can see, on my action bar, I was onto only gold star wine by this point, as the gold star grapes were coming in steady. Only the finest wine for me. On day 151, I finally made a zombie winery, and I discovered I can slap grapes straight into it without having to bother with juicing first. I unfortunately didn't have enough grapes on hand to get it working immediately, but this was excellent news. I also made a zombie brewery, and this required the same ingredients as the keg stand, but of course it's fully automated, so it's a no-brainer to make use of it. I ducked out to give a cheeky sermon, and then made some extra trunks in the cellar, drew a ton of water from the well, and stocked it all down here along with a bunch of wheat and just like that my automated beer production was underway. Miss Charm was back at the tavern so I gave her the gold star story. She asked me to chat to the farmer and see if I could get him to allow his daughter Alyssa to go with Miss Charm to the royal court. Apparently he won't let her because he doesn't approve of his daughter's musical interests. I also gave Miss Charm the jewelry I crafted and with that she agreed to tell everyone about graveyard veggies. I then floated the idea that I might know who her father is and she immediately shut the idea down saying he's a dishonorable man and she doesn't want anything to do with him. So I 
guess the astrologer's got some work to do if he wants to reconcile this one. I immediately headed to chat with the farmer, but he was having none of it. He said he doesn't trust Miss Charm and his daughter is not allowed to go. Alyssa's brother overheard us talking and he devised a plan. He reckoned if I help the farmer's brother, the miller, to fix his mill, the farmer will be overjoyed and maybe then he'll let Alyssa go. I don't really see how the two things are related, but fair enough. And so I spoke to the miller and he said he had Ikea instructions for the mill's repair, but he couldn't figure it out so he gave up. Classic Ikea. He gave me the instructions, but the last page was missing because he ate it or something. So I needed to go to the astrologer and ask for help. Man, there's a lot of quests in this game. There's more quests than I thought. This is outrageous. Outrageous indeed. Fortunately, I can just teleport everywhere and run at the speed of sound, so it wasn't really a big deal. I harvested some crops and ended up with enough gold star onion seeds to begin a zombie farm. So I queued a bunch up. Another body arrived, introducing zombie number 19, and he got busy farming them golden onions. I headed up to the zombie mines area and collected all the coal from this trunk and mined even more coal from the infinite scene, as I needed a fuel restock for the constant smelting going on in my workyard. I headed into town and informed the merchant that Miss Charm will happily post thought-provoking Instagram stories promoting graveyard veggies and this pleased him, raising our friendship to 90 points. This allowed me to ask him if he, as a friend of the royals, would be the esteemed guest at the bishop's ceremony. He was reluctant and revealed that he is in fact the bishop's estranged brother. But I suggested maybe it was time for reconciliation and he agreed to show up. Also check out all these crates ready to be sold. Most of these are full of nails. I grabbed some gold grapes that my faithful zombies had harvested and with that I had enough to get the ball rolling at the zombie winery. Automated wine, exactly what I need to keep me energized. Snake was visiting, so I filled up his second fountain with Crimson Glory and also chucked some skulls in the wall. But I still need 10 more skulls to finish up his grizzly area, so he'll have to wait a little longer. As always, I kept the production of materials chugging along in the yard, and then I decided I wanted more gold. So I headed up to the quarry and started chipping away at the infinite iron mine. There's a chance for gold nuggets to pop out, but it's a pretty small one, and I only got one nugget before my pickaxe broke. I was at least able to stack up a big pile of iron for my zombie porter to take back to base. I buried another body, and as day 155, dawned, I crafted a few gold jewelry details. I took these to the church and used them to make a stained glass window in this one random spot, as well as my first tier three candelabra, which has three spots for candles instead of two. I collected this week's graveyard veggies profit and harvested and replanted lentils and pumpkins, except I ran out of tier two fertilizer. I made a bunch of chisels and used them to create some polished bricks of marble and then shipped two crates of these via the crate factory. I'm not sure why I did this. I guess I was running low on iron, so I didn't want to make 5,000 nails. I visited the astrologer and told him the bad news regarding his daughter, but I promised I'd keep an eye out for opportunities for him to win back her affection. I then got him to complete the Ikea instructions for the mill. I buried yet another body and unlocked steel tools and made myself a steel axe, shovel, and pickaxe. Sunday rolled around, so I gave the bishop the accepted invitation from the merchant. I then began working towards a higher quality prayer. I'd been using a bronze star combo prayer that increases faith and money yield by 50%, but if I manage to make a gold star one of these, it'll be a 150% bonus, which is nuts. And so I unlocked the playwright perk, which improves my quality chances for written items. And then I successfully wrote some silver chapters. I needed quality book covers though, and I was running low on time. So I benched that project for a moment and gave my weekly sermon. I continued fluffing around trying to make a book cover. The trickiest thing I needed was some tanning agent. So I began working towards concocting some of that. And then I wandered off to fix the mill. I chatted to the farmer and as predicted, he was over the moon. And this randomly translated into him deciding he'd let his daughter go to the royal event. I immediately informed Miss Charm of this great news and she was pleased, except Alyssa was too young to go. So she needed to adjust her age by a couple of years on the document and she needed an aristocrat to sign off on it. That sounds thoroughly illegal, but I am in the habit of turning people's recently deceased loved ones into zombies. So I guess I'm down for anything. I'll need my aristocrat papers though. And I was still a few gold short. Another body arrived and this one finally had the dark brain I needed for the inquisitor. I harvested it, burned the body and then harvested some pumpkins and lentils. And with that, I now had 24 gold star pumpkin and lentil seeds which was enough to get them growing in a zombie farm. Great news for graveyard veggies, as the gold star crop boxes sell for 16 silver and 50 copper a pop, which is the most profitable crate option available. I then resurrected this random corpse that I had chilling in the fridge, that's zombie number 20, and I resurrected this fresh corpse, zombie number 21, and I cleared out all the farm plots and planted down three more zombie farms. I then realized I didn't have the fertilizer, I needed to upgrade them, so they were kind of useless for the time being, but at least I was well on my way to glorious zombie farm automation. I then decided to dig up a few corpses 
and yoink out their skulls. I dug up three, chopped them up for all they're worth, reburied a couple and burned one. And I finished off the decor up here. It looks like a dream. Actually, it's very similar to my living room now that I think about it. Anyway, on day 161, I was finally able to give old mate his dark brain. He assured me he'd show the dark organs to the king and that we'd be back to burning witches in no time. Another body arrived, so I buried it over here and then spent some time collecting red mushrooms and crafting reagents and ended up with a stack of 50 tier two quality fertilizer. I finally built this zombie farm and managed to get myself stuck. And honestly, I freaked out for a bit before remembering I had a teleport stone. I continued building the farms, got distracted by body 3,247. And then I upgraded the farms and chucked a zombie on to farm gold star lentils and gold star pumpkins. I also used the extra plots I have available at the top to plant some crops with fertilizer so I can yield some more gold seeds to keep the zombie farms going 24 seven. I gave my weekly sermon and then grabbed a bunch of beer and attempted to sell them to the tavern keep, but he didn't want them which is outrageous. And speaking of outrageous, look at all the hops and beer in this trunk. I unlocked the scientist perk, which I really should have got ages ago, as this is just a passive bonus to the amount of reagents I collect. And then I figured I should work on doing some more research unlocks, so I made a bunch of gravestones to farm blue points. And I made even more grave fences. I farmed about 500 points and then destroyed most of the fences because I don't really have a use for them beyond the blue tech points. A body arrived and crucially, it had another dark brain, which I had been waiting for. I sliced it out, studied it, earning another cheeky 100 blue points and chucked it in the hand mixer to get death solution, which is really gross by the way. Imagine squishing a purple brain into goo using your hands. Actually, you know what? I take that back. That sounds heaps fun. Anyway, I used the death solution to at long last make a tanning agent, which I used to make a bronze star hardcover. From there, it was pretty straightforward to upgrade it to gold star. Although it took me a while to get the gold jewelry details I needed. While waiting around for some gold to smelt, I unlocked the rest of the book writing tech tree, most notably the writer perk, which will increase my chances of writing quality books. Snake was back, so I showed him his new digs and he was especially impressed by the pumpkins. He said the next thing he needed was a damask sword. I unlocked the tech tree to forge one and then finally grabbed all the materials I needed and crafted the gold star hardcover. I built a printing press, random text generator and a tier two desk, all of which were unlocked when I researched the entire writing tech tree. And then I noticed something very interesting. With my gold hardcover and a silver chapter, I had a 20% chance of getting a gold star book, but apparently the jeweler perk would contribute to improving my chances. And so I unlocked gems and jeweler and the chance shot up to 90 percent all right come on give me gold give me gold let's go okay and now combo prayer okay that's a big upgrade it was a huge upgrade indeed in fact i did some googling and according to the interwebs it's the best prayer you can get very nice. I did some farming, buried a body, and then checked out the printing press I made earlier. It just mash produces flyers. I also checked out the random text generator and discovered you can chuck a zombie on it to craft stories or books that give either blue, green, or red tech points at random. And so I made a paper press in the yard with which I can mass produce paper. I put all that on pause for a second to chat with the inquisitor and he was devastated to tell me that the king had not been receptive to the dark organs. He said the king wanted more evidence and I had the option to tell him about Jerry or to snitch about Snake's weird taste in cultish decorations, but I of course chose to plead ignorance. There's no way I'm going to betray my boys, even if they happen to be an alcoholic skull and a mass murderer. I collected another week's profit from the crate operation and I was now only 70 silver shy of my 12 gold goal. I researched bones and then milled a bunch down into delicious white powder. I collected a bunch of wheat and buckets of water and made some paper glop and then mixed the white powder with oil to make white paint. And with that, I was able to make 60 clean paper. I carved up another body and managed to get eight white skulls. So I resurrected zombie number 22, my first 20% efficient zombie. I put him straight onto the random text generator producing books. So this will be a passive source of tech points. I didn't actually really need many tech points. So this was probably a waste, but whatever. I then finally took a reignited interest in candles. I really, really, really should have been using candles for like the past 300 sermons, but for some reason I thought it was too much of a headache to collect the necessary beeswax. Well, it turns out Old Mate Beekeeper sells a stack of 17 relatively cheaply, and I'd now worked out how to make white paint, so I was equipped to make these white candles. Now, looking at this, you can clearly see there is a visual difference between the two white candles, but for some reason, I thought these were the exact same item, but with two different recipes so you could choose which result 
resources you wanted to expend. Well, I was wrong and the fatter white candles are better as they give plus three quality when lit as opposed to plus two. But I wanted to preserve beeswax so I accidentally made the inferior white candles. Long story short, I'm a goose and I made the less good candles. But less good is a heck of a lot better than no good. And I was able to raise the church quality all the way to 111 by lighting most of the candles. And of course, I now had my gold star combo prayer to provide a 150% bonus. So this week was gonna be a big one. It's gonna be the best sermon and prayer combo you've ever heard. Our church is great. It's a classic, but it works every time. There's no doubt about it. All right, five, 22 all up. Gold star combo prayer. Holy crap. <laughs> 58 faith in one go. Holy crap. I also earned a juicy 40 silver for my efforts. And with that, I was well and truly a believer in the power of candles. So I immediately went on a beeswax hunt. I still only had one hive, which was a disgrace. So I hit up the beekeeper and bought 20 bees off him. And I also had 11 bees chilling in a chest. So I was able to make three more. These produce daily. So it was just a matter of trying to make a habit of collecting. I stole one of the crappy zombies from the stone quarry and assigned him to the second porter station up here so that all the stone and iron gets delivered more consistently. And then I resurrected zombie 23 who was a more efficient fellow and put him on the quarry. I then realized I could make a water pump, so I did. And this thing does exactly what you'd expect. It pumps water, which is actually very nice. No more drawing my own water in a bucket like a peasant. I also discovered I could make lanterns. I guess I unlocked this at some point. So I made a couple up here. Quite lovely ambiance, no doubt, no doubt. And I also made another stone and iron stockpile to help avoid a backlog of materials. I yoinked this corpse out of the freezer and resurrected zombie number 24. And I chucked him on to farm some wheat at the remaining free zombie farm. By the Wait, look at how many carrots are in Donkey's crate. Ah. All right, 795. It's gonna be literally, it's gonna be like 180 days before I run out of carrots for the fella. So that's good. I welcomed zombie number 25, made some more fertilizer, placed down five more zombie vineyards, filling up the remaining space over here and upgraded one of them fully for our new zombie friend to work on farming gold star grapes. I was now consistently creating gold star veggie crates, by the way, basically whenever my zombies finished a round of farming. A body with some of the worst stats I'd ever seen arrived, so I burned it and then I ate some cake and researched a dark heart and dark intestines, earning a cheeky 200 plus blue points. I bought some more seed oil from Dig because I love Dig and also because I need oil to make white paint and I bought nine beeswax and bees from old mate beekeeper. I then collected this week's earnings. Uh, we finally got the gold we need. Let's go. Judging by that clip, I was either constipated or I was excited that I could now progress both my Bishop and Miss Charm quest lines. I burned yet another unimpressive body, made a bunch of white paint and crafted 40 more tier two candles. I did another beeswax run and managed to make one more beehive and then finally unlocked the cultist perk. This cost a whopping 300 blue tech points, but it was worth it as it lets you actually see the attributes of body parts. This helped me finally understand what I sort of already knew. All the major organs, the heart, the brain and intestines have random attributes different from body to body. Whereas all the other minor body parts have the same attributes no matter what. Either way, it was now way easier for me to deal with bodies now that I had this perk. I then resurrected zombie 26 and put into work producing even more grapes. It was Sunday, so I finally paid my way into becoming an aristocrat, which allowed me to collect my aristocrat papers, which I showed to the bishop. And finally, it was time. Let us begin the ceremony. Woo hoo. It's your, it's your brother. <laughs> Hello, the new keeper of the king's kitchen. Oh, it's beautiful. It's heartwarming. He's happy for him. So this ceremony was supposed to be about showing off the cathedral and praying for rain, but it turned into a sentimental affair about family reconciliation because the bishop was so overwhelmed at seeing his long lost brother. And fair play, that messaging worked quite well on this bloke. I need to go apologize to my mum. Brother, yes, brother. Oh, they're hugging. They're hugging it out. It's beautiful to behold. I do need your mirror. Oh, I've got one of the... Oh my gosh, I got two of the items I need for the portal all of a sudden. So out of nowhere, with some of the most heartwarming stuff I've ever seen, by the way, I had completed one third of my final quest. Two out of six portal items in the bag. My good mood didn't last for long though, because I then got massively trolled. It was still Sunday, so I figured business as usual. I've got a sermon to preach. And so I lit my candles. Oh, I can't. No! Ah! 
that. Yeah, so apparently the big ceremony took place of my regular service, so I just wasted like 20 candles. I then crafted a couple more marble busts and used them to make another stone shrine, increasing the base church quality by a further three points. On day 76, Miss Charm was back, so I informed her of my ascent to aristocracy, and she said she thought it'd make me taller or more handsome. No, you silly willy, it just means I'm rich. I was then able to help forge some illegal documents for Alyssa, but of course there are always more problems to deal with, and this time Miss Charm needed me to write her a song for her upcoming performance. I took this problem straight to the poet, and he of course is desperate to prove himself to Miss Charm, so he jumped at the opportunity, but he asked me to get him some fly agaric infusion, which is basically just ridiculously strong alcohol. He claims it'll give him inspiration for his writing. I googled how the heck to get one of those and discovered I needed an alcohol distiller, so I unlocked the remainder of the farming and nature tech tree. This included the wine master perk, which made my wine restore even more energy. Great news for my rampant alcoholism. I made a fermentation barrel in which I can make apple and berry ferment, and a distillery in which I can make booze, 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 and booze. I fueled it up and used some wine to make booze, and then collected some red mushrooms which are needed for the infusion. Once the booze was done, I made the infusion, delivered it to Wagner, and he said it was quite inspiring, but he needed time to write and he told me to return later. I dealt with another body, the first I'd buried in a while as I'd been on quite the resurrecting spree. I made two more hives, increasing my total to the maximum seven. I bought some gold jewelry details and a diamond off the merchant and used these to make a sword with a gem in it. Very fancy. This had double the damage of my old sword. I then unlocked the zombie alchemy tech. This let me build a zombie alchemy workbench to automate potion creation and a zombie alchemy decomposer to automate reagent gathering. I placed down a workbench, but the decomposer was enormous and could only fit in this left corner where I already had some machines. I removed them and then rebuilt them down in this corridor instead and plonked down the decomposer. This allows a zombie to do the job of a distillation cube, hand mixer, and mill all in one, so that is very handy. On day 169, I unlocked the big guy perk, which increased my defense and attack by one, and I crafted myself some steel armor. And after burning the body for the day, I headed into the dungeon. I took off where I was up to on level seven, and my big hope was that I'd find some gold veins, as I desperately need gold nuggets in order to make a bunch of jewelry. With my new perk, sword, and armor, I was significantly stronger, so I breezed through. And on level eight, I fought these explodey lightning fellows, and I found five diamonds. As I reached level nine, I chose to exit and empty my bags. I quickly chucked this eight white skull body in the fridge and headed back down for more. Level 9 was much the same, plenty of fairly easy to dispatch enemies, yet more silver, and most excitingly, a gold vein with 9 gold nuggets. I exited after reaching level 10 and put the gold onto smelt and hit up the church for another Sunday. I chatted briefly with the bishop, who said everything was going swimmingly since last week's ceremony. He had decided to use his growing influence in league with his brother to help the poor and fight the Inquisition's cruelty. This vain and silly bishop has come a long way, I am so proud. I lit my candles and gave my sermon, earning 63 faith, and then headed into level 10 of the dungeon. There was more silver, some orange slimes, and these weirdos that shot black balls at me. And when I reached the end of the level, it was locked, so I couldn't ascend to the remaining five levels just yet. I left a zombie working away making some gold jewelry details, and then finally returned to see how Wagner was doing with his song. He was nowhere to be found, but he left a note that read, we're screwed, I'm growing hair in strange places. Meet me at night at the sea cliffs near the mountain fort. Either the poet was finally going through puberty, or that weird beverage I gave him was having unforeseen side effects. Either way, I had no song ready to give to Miss Charm just yet. I buried another body and then built a few alchemy racks for increased storage down here, as well as some mortuary racks in the morgue. I then resurrected Zombie 27 and had him build me some crates. I collected my business profits and bought one gold jewelry detail from the merchant and 16 beeswax from the beekeeper. I crafted the damask sword for snake, buried another body, and then crafted 99 ceramic bowls. Except I can't actually fit in there to craft them myself because I built the jewelry station thingo in the way so I had to slip old mate zombie in there to do the work for me. I guess he's a bit skinnier than I am. Anyway, I tried not to let that hit to my body image bring me down as I delivered Snake his sword. The first step of Snake's plan was to invite his followers into his creepy lair and exploit my immortality. He figured if he killed me and I showed back up, he could claim that he had made me immortal. This was a solid plan that came largely at my expense. Don't do it, Snake. Oi! That's rude. That is rude behavior. <laughs> I respawned in my bed, headed back to the scene of the crime, and Snake's followers were suitably impressed. After that spectacle, he said he needed a little time to make his final preparations. I then went and had a snooze, because that's how you save in this game. I literally never snooze except for when I'm saving. But anyway, when I awoke, who should it be but that guy that stabbed me? He said a vampire hunter was after him. Apparently word had gotten out about his immortality shenanigans, and he needed my help to set up a trap at Witch Hill. And then we sat on the hill for ages. And as you can see, the plank is jammed under that giant boulder, so you can probably see where this is going.
Oh dear. So I guess that emphatically settles that. And I got a free body as well as this hunter's medallion. I ended up resurrecting old mate vampire hunter into zombie number 28. So I thought that was quite kind. It must be a pretty flat zombie though after that incident with the giant boulder. Snake had mentioned that the hunter's medallion should unlock the way deeper into the dungeon. And sure enough, it did just that. And so I continued on level 11. There were some golem thingos that dropped graphite, plenty of slimes and flies, some more diamonds. And once I was done with level 11, I had a quick break to burn a body and put a zombie on the alchemy decomposer to get life extract out of some maggots. I did a few more chores and on day 186, it was back into level 12 of the dungeons. This was just monsters galore, which is always a fun time. I emerged to resurrect zombie 29 and then decided I better go see if I could find the poet where he told me he'd meet me by the cliffs. He appeared from behind a bush and swore at me and then explained the infusion had indeed given him inspiration to write a banger song, but it had also turned him feral. He gave me the song just as some guides emerged to see what was going on. We're just talking. Oh, that's the son of the Lord Commander? What? So the poet is the son of the Lord Commander. And the hunchback had told me that the Lord Commander's son is probably the one who bought the necklace. It begins to make sense. Either way, he just got captured, so I guess I'll have to rescue him later. We'll see. I headed home and made some more speed potions. Except these cost blood, which I was quite low on, and blood is useful for a number of important potions. So I hit up Google and discovered there's a way to extend the duration of buffs. Just eat some sauerkraut. So I hit up the tavern and bought some. Now every time I refresh my speed potion, I'll eat some sauerkraut first, and that'll increase the duration by a few minutes and in the long run saved me some blood. Big strats. I made a bunch of candles and gave my sermon and then made two more marble statues and upgraded the final shrine. On day 188 I gave Mish Charm the song that the rabid poet wrote and she was deeply moved. She was also distressed to hear he was in captivity and asked me to find a way to rescue him and this sparked an idea. Maybe the astrologer can help using his old connections and this could be a way for him to redeem himself. I collected wax, admired this ridiculous trunk full of produce and then headed up to the quarry to try and get some gold. I managed to get three nuggets before a body arrived to distract me. I decided I had a better chance of getting a decent amount of gold in the dungeon, so I headed on to level 13. This level had some fancy elemental golem things that dropped silver nuggets, yet another silver vein, some diamonds, and of course, tons of other monsters. Once I was done with level 13, I ducked out and resurrected zombie number 30 and unceremoniously dumped him on the lawn for some reason. I then headed back down and on level 14, I finally found a gold vein. I emerged after completing the level and Snake was back and he had his final task for me, get the golden apple from the bottom of the dungeon. I put my gold nuggets onto smelt, buried a body, and headed back down to level 15. Not only did this level have a gold vein, it also had four of these golden elemental fellows that dropped gold nuggets, so I got 21 total. And of course, I found the golden apple. Unfortunately, by the time I emerged, Snake was gone, so I couldn't complete his quest until next week. I put all that gold onto smelt and set up a zombie to craft all the gold jewelry I could afford, and then collected this week's profit. I sold 10 crates of gold veggies this week. I buried another body, collected some beeswax, and on day 192, I paid the astrologer a visit. I explained that his daughter needed help and he said he'd be able to gain access to the mountain fort if the university sent him on an archaeological expedition, except he needed to win his way back into the uni's graces. In order to do that, he needed to present them with more research, except the old bloke was so depressed he hadn't done any research. And so it was up to me to write him a silver star book. I realized I could just buy a silver cover from him, which I wish I had known earlier. So I took that back to base and wrote him a book, except I was too lucky and accidentally made a gold star book. So I had to craft my own hard cover anyway. And second time round, I successfully made a silver star book. He said he needed some time to present it to the university and that I should return to him next week. I buried a fresh corpse right in the corner of the graveyard. And that was quite an accomplishment, filling up these big old church grounds with bodies. And then I took over jewelry crafting duties because old mate undead was too flame and slow. I'd managed to accumulate 52 beeswax. And so for once the scarce resource was actually white paint. And this inspired me to craft the superior candles as they cost two white paint instead of three. I removed all the old candelabra and replaced Place them with tier three, finally fully upgrading my church interior. And while lighting the candles, I finally realized. Oh, wait, what? Oh, 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 oh. Some of these are better. I just realized this variety is better. As you can see, they give three points each instead of two. So lighting all three candles on a tier three candelabra adds an enormous nine quality to the church. And so this week I gave my sermon to a 156 quality church, but it actually could have been 12 points higher if I'd used only tier three candles. Regardless, this happened.
Holy moly dooly woly. I got 80 faith in one week. That is eight zombies worth. After the roaring success of them tier three candles, which do require more beeswax, my hunt for wax was front of mind. So I made sure to do my daily beehive collection. I even went all the way up here to these random trees in the forest and these random trees in town. Another body arrived, but of course the graveyard was completely full. So I exhumed this random crappy body to make space. Apologies to any loved ones who come to visit Billy. His body has been dug up and burnt. Actually, you know what? I just won't tell them and they'll never know. No harm, no foul. Anyway, I made a bunch more fertilizer and resurrected zombie number 31 and finally built and fully upgraded the three remaining vineyards. All my grapes and hops had already overflowed into a second chest by this point. So it's not like I needed any more vineyards, but why not? And then I gave Snake his golden apple. He just wants to lick it. Do I get a lick? Oh, giving it a lick gave me heaps of blue points. Glorious. And the final thing he needed from me was a dark heart. Fortunately, I keep plenty of dark hearts in the pantry, so I gave him one and he wandered off to gather his followers for the ritual. Jerry popped out of nowhere and said he was excited for the hilarious show to unfold. And when Snake returned, I had to admit the show was kind of hilarious. Father? The Inquisitor? <laughs> What the heck? Snake is the Inquisitor's son. Goodness gracious. The twists in this game. So we reunited some bros before. We're in the process of reuniting a father and daughter. And I guess today it was father and son time. The Inquisitor abruptly put all his cult destroying ways behind him. And Snake seemed to lose his razor sharp edge as they finally found the comfort of family after all these years. Even better, Snake gave me his endless notebook and the Inquisitor gave me his endless burning coal, which made four out of six items for the portal's repair. I resurrected zombie number 32 and chucked him on the alchemy workbench to craft 60 white paint and then did my all important beeswax run. I figured I might as well try and finish off the tech tree before the 200 day mark. So I unlocked fine woodworking, no idea what that's for, but it seems fine, as well as sword master. And then all I had left was the graveyard enhancement tech. I unlocked as many of those as I could, but I was shy about 250 blue points for the remaining two researchers. And so of course I made 50 stone grave fences, destroyed them all, and then unlocked the final two. This taught me how to make some very fancy gravestones that seemed very expensive to make. It was astrologer day, so I paid him a visit and he said the book was a raging success, but he needed another. So he asked me to get him a gold star one this time. Unfortunately, this meant I wasn't able to wrap up his and Miss Charm's storyline before 200 days. But on the plus side, I already had the gold star book that I accidentally made last week. I guess I'll have to hit him up next week to see what the deal is. I collected some cheeky graveyard veggies profit as well as some beeswax and then resurrected zombie number 33 and whacked him on the final as yet unworked vineyard. And as day 199 dawned, I crafted 64 tier three candles, which I took upstairs and used to raise the church quality all the way up to 168, which yielded 88 faith. I then investigated all the various graveyard decorations I'd unlocked. I removed all the little gardens and replaced them with lanterns that added four quality. I placed down some marble flagstones, which added three quality a piece, and a couple of lawns, which added four. I managed to raise the graveyard quality from 392 all the way to 445 with my efforts. I fluffed around on day 200. I bought some sauerkraut. You already know I acquired as much beeswax as humanly possible. I chopped up this body and put it in the fridge. You know, it was just a normal day. And suddenly 200 days were done, a glorious milestone. On day 201, I invited Stranger Sins, Game of Crones, and Better Save Soul to the party. Give me all the DLCs. The story was about to get way more intense and the list of fun things to do just got longer. I wandered into the morgue and out of nowhere, Jerry was outraged about how awful the wine I gave him like 150 days ago was. He said he wanted some cognac. I had no idea how to get cognac. So he said I should look for a buried old keg that he and the former graveyard keeper used to drink from. For now though, it was about time I figured out what the heck corpse embalming was all about. And step one was to gather some sand and smelt it into glass. Donkey rocked up and he informed me it was time for the communist revolution. The executive committee of the party of donkeys proletariat. <laughs> he said I was to be given one more chance to prove myself in the eyes of enlightened labor. And if I refuse? It'll burn down a home, graveyard, garden, and church. That sounds about right. My first task was to create a cookbook for the rat chief, as the donkeys need the help of Ratatouille in their revolution, apparently. And also, I was to provide five red apples to help boost donkey morale. I crafted this contraband crate, and this is where I'll leave all the requested goodies for donkey to pick up. All right, there's the... <laughs> It's got a picture of a curvy carrot and an apple. Hammer and sickle, step aside. I immediately grabbed apples from this tree and chucked them in the crate. I then headed back into the morgue. It's, it's Wrigley. <laughs> 
Uh, even if you've died quite recently, I'm pretty sure you don't wriggle. I helped the wriggler free and it was Yurik, some bloke from the town. He told me he had a keeper's book and it said there was a hidden area in the morgue. He demanded I give him the key, except I had no idea what he was talking about. He found an excerpt that read, glued the key with chewing gum to the inner side of the skull. <laughs> Is it in Jerry's skull? I burned the other non wriggly body, and while doing so, Donkey returned to collect his apples. Those are fresh from the orchard, mate. Hope you and the Donkey comrades enjoy. I crafted 10 speed potions, ate some sauerkraut, and then drank them all at once. Because a commenter mentioned the buff duration stacks. And so now I'll be zippy zippy for two and a half hours. Very nice. I queued up a bunch of stuff to zombie craft in the yard, and then rather than straight up telling Jerry he had a chewing gum key in his head, I decided to offer to clean him with beer. He's a raging alcoholic, so he was a big fan of that idea. Are you ready to shine as bright as diamond? Shine bright like a diamond. Like the video and subscribe if you agree that a scrubbing mixture of beer and sand would definitely make your skull shine bright like a diamond. All right, I'm cleaning. <laughs> it tickles. It tickles, Jerry, does it? All right, I found the old rusty key. I quickly made the Ratatouille cookbook, chucked it into the communist crate, and then gave the key to Yurik. Who is this guy, by the way? Just Holy moly, there's a whole massive area in here. This looks kind of creepy. Yurik then finally told me what his deal was. He had committed a crime and he was on the run. To escape, he'd pretended to be a corpse and had been sent off to the graveyard. Before chatting to the criminal weirdo any further, I made a couple more fridge pallets so that I can store more bodies and not feel so much pressure to deal with each corpse as soon as it arrives. I chatted to Yurik and he explained he'd been cheated out of his money by the bishop. To be honest, that sounds like classic bishop behavior. And the crime that had put him on the run was stealing his money back from the bishop. He also explained that this strange room held devices to heal souls of the dead, and perhaps even living souls. And the reason he'd fled here was that he wanted his soul healed. We also had a look at this strange box. Whoa, there's a ghost. <laughs> what the hell are you? This fella is Smiler, and he'd been stuck in that box for decades. I unlocked some new building options, and also an entirely new tech tree for spiritualism. Very juicy. We do love a good tech tree. Smiler said he wouldn't help me out explaining what the heck was going on until I brought him a berry pie, so I put some on to cook. Once ready, I fed the apparition his pie, and he told me he was half man, half ghost. And a previous graveyard keeper had been trying to create devices that would heal souls from sin, and also send those souls to the land of the dead. Well, I'm already in the business of messing with stinky corpses, why not mess with some stinky souls too? I cleaned up a bit and gave Yurik some oil with which to lubricate the rusty hinges of this trapdoor. The plan was to hide Yurik down here, but it was a bit of a mess, so I was tasked with cleaning it up. I then discovered a note in the communist crate. The rat's chief can't read, but he enjoyed the pictures in your cookbook. Okay. So he ripped them out and ate them. Well, that sounds productive. There weren't enough apples, so the donkeys fought each other over them, and there were a lot of casualties but they appreciated the effort. Sounds like the revolution is firing on all cylinders. My next task was to write and send them aphorisms about the evils of money and also send them five faith. I wrote the aphorisms. I can only imagine I wrote something like money bad, donkey supreme. And I placed what I'd written plus the five faith in the crate. After an absolute whirlwind of a few days, I did some farming to calm down a bit. I queued up a bunch of crates for my graveyard veggies business to sell and also set the queue on all the zombie farms to create infinite crops. Another tip from the comments section. This will save me clicking the right arrow 4,000 times. I fridged another body and as day 204 dawned, I went for a dig on behalf of Jerry. I didn't find his cognac, but I did find this archeological machine. Jerry said the graveyard keeper before the cognac graveyard keeper had built this. So I guess there were multiple graveyard keepers before me. But then Kresvold wandered over and told me off for digging on public land. So our conversation was cut short. I then hit up the astrologer to continue with the main quest line. The university was extremely impressed by the book I'd written. So they had restored the astrologer's credentials and greenlit the archeological expedition up by the the mountain fort. The last thing needed was an aristocrat's signature, and fortunately I happened to be of that noble class. I queued up a bunch of conical flasks, step two of my quest toward embalming, and then returned with my aristocrat papers and off we went. It magically became nighttime, which was handy as it meant the soldiers were sleeping and we were able to rescue Wagner. He was embarrassed Miss Charm was seeing his hairy, hairy body and the tail that had grown due to the flyer Garrick infusion, but Miss Charm said she only cared about his inner beauty. The plan was to put Wagner in a crate and sneak him out, pretending he was an archeological find but we were caught. The Lord Commander was furious and he declared he would have us killed. Miss Charm and the astrologer said their apologies, reconciling their father-daughter relationship while they still could. And then Miss Charm went in for a little smoochy smooch with the hairy-lipped Wagner. This magically turned him back into his normal self, just like a princess and a frog. The Lord Commander was aghast he'd almost killed his own son. And Wagner said that if we were released, he'd commit himself to becoming a knight like his father had always wanted. And so overall, that was a successful expedition. In thanks, I received the necklace from Miss Charm 
charm and the golden angle from the astrologer. I suddenly had everything I needed to activate the portal on Witch Hill. If I want to, I can finish the game right now. But it feels like it wouldn't be right. It feels, it feels like it wouldn't be right. I think I need to do the DLC first. And so it was back to business. We'll hit up the portal later. I harvested and burned another corpse and then found Donkey had left another note. My aphorisms were appreciated, good. We decided to adopt them as the constitution of the coming worldwide Donkey Socialistic Republic, okay? After consuming the faith, everyday donkeys became greatly inspired, even believing that all donkeys are equal. We have had to remind them with our hooves that some donkeys are more equal than others. My next task was to provide them with battle gear, some battle horseshoes and iron unicorn horns, as well as a magical pumpkin carriage with which to embarrass their master. That makes no sense at all to me, but it sounds like a recipe for some Cinderella shenanigans, so I was all for it. Sunday rolled around, so I lit all the candles and gave a combo prayer church service, earning a juicy 88 faith. I had a quick snooze, and when I awoke, some weirdo was in my house. He wasn't a thief, but he had escaped from prison three days ago, so I guess that was a relief. He was Marquis Teodoro Jr. And he and his rich friends had been sentenced to the fire by the Inquisition. But he insisted to me they were falsely accused, which I 100% believe. The Inquisition will burn anyone these days. They'd set up a refugee camp in the forest to the north, but since they were all aristocrats, none of them had any useful life skills, so they needed my help. He also introduced me to Master Alaric, the former Inquisitor who had helped them escape. This old fella asked what the ancient god had told me. I had no idea what he was talking about, which I yelled back at him in all caps because he was extremely deaf. My ignorance annoyed him, so he told me to leave him be. The Marquis told me there were many others back in town that could use refuge, but the camp needed to grow first. So he tasked me with building a well and an additional tent. These cost a resource called Camp Happiness, which I could grow by providing food and water. I think it would be fitting to feed these guys some human meat burgers right? It would be on brand. It would really be on brand. So I'm slicing up some human meat right now. I grabbed a bunch of berries, apples, and water, cooked up the cannibal burgers, and grabbed whatever other random food I had lying around. And this all seemed to contribute to the happiness growth of the camp. So it was just a matter of time until I had the happiness I needed. I headed into town and bought some dairy goods and eggs so that I could cook even more food, fridged yet another corpse, and asked Kresvold to craft the battle horseshoes and iron unicorn horns for me. He asked me if Heradric was playing a prank on him, as Heradric often does that to help cure his crippling depression. And I said, don't be silly, I have a perfectly normal reason for wanting these. They're for the communist donkey revolution, don't you know? He charged me 50 silver and told me to come get them later. I made even more food for the refugees and then made a discovery. Oh, look, what? look at this. <laughs> I think I made a few too many crates. I can only sell 10 per week, so I'd better calm down. I paid a visit to the zombie vineyards and grabbed a bunch of grapes, which I chucked in the cellar for continued zombie wine making shenanigans. I grabbed some materials, including silk, and returned to the refugee camp and made a new tent. This used up two happiness, but increased the happiness cap up to four. I then continued work on my embalming quest. I studied the black jelly I got from killing those weird monsters in the dungeon, as well as silver nuggets, and then hand mixed the black jelly into death solution and milled the silver nuggets into silver powder. A bunch of crates had been sold, so I placed the overflow crates neatly on pallets to be transported by Mr. Muscle's zombie and then dealt with another body. I actually buried this one as all my fridges were full and the crappy corpse I dug up to make space in the graveyard held an interesting discovery. Wait, what the heck? There's a sin shard in this body. My guess was this had something to do with the soul contraptions in the new room next door. I then continued gathering alchemy reagents. I studied a bee and white flower, hand mixed some bees into order solution and continued distilling life extract from maggots. I used silver powder, order solution and life extract to make silver elixir, and then had alchemy zombie get to work mixing a bunch more. I studied a lentil and a pumpkin and put the lentils on to distill into health extract. By the way, I was using extensive Googling to guide me through all these alchemy shenanigans. I headed to the refugee camp and built a well, and the next quest the Marquis had for me was to build an additional tent and set up fencing for a farm area. I did a bunch of chores, performed a banger sermon, and then made three more fridge pallets. I also made a few more mortuary racks for more storage. I paid the blacksmith a visit and collected the donkey armaments, which I placed in donkey's crate. I kept zombie crafting chugging along in the yard and made three more alchemy racks down here or yet more storage. I like storage. I even did a little organizing, designating one rack for alchemy powders and another for extracts and solutions. I built the refugee camp its farming area and also invited a new refugee to the party. She wasn't particularly talkative. I finally upgraded my fourth furnace to level three and then asked Clotho to enchant a pumpkin. She went on a rant about how an enchanted pumpkin won't impress the ladies and said ridiculous things like love and care will, which we both had a good laugh about. And then I paid her 50 silver to shut up and make me the flame and magic pumpkin. And I placed it in Donkey's crate. I bought some silk and beeswax and then finally remembered to talk to Jerry about the machine we dug up about 10 days ago. Since we can't dig it up without owning land, Jerry suggested we buy the land and build a tavern on top of it as a cover. I asked him why he was so keen to use the machine and he said he hopes it will help him remember his past. Up at the camp, I welcomed another friend. Push me. 
Push me, new refugee. And then I received another revolutionary message from Donkey. Okay, the donkeys have traded in the battle gear of the donkey for pink ribbons and in their manes. That seems counterproductive. They're not just acting like morons, they're also looking like morons. When the carriage turned to a pumpkin, the royal vet lost his shoe. That shoe was found by a young and wealthy widow, <laughs> Cinderella. My next task was to provide some black and white paint so the donkeys could disguise themselves as zebras. Some jelly of incredible power for the rats, which will make them martial arts gurus and fond of turtles, apparently, as well as a banner. I then hit up Haradric and asked to buy some land. That seems steep, 9,682 gold. He suggested I buy the land in the name of a poor and old villager, as they get discounts. Can I buy some land in your name, Dig? He's just talking about cake. Dear cake, dear cake, let me take, let you bake. I took that wonderful chant as approval and returned to Haradric. And the discounted price was a bargain at 30 silver. It's such a relief I was able to exploit the elderly to my advantage. Now that I had the land, I needed contractors to build. So I paid Corey two gold to drop all his current projects and get to work. I had a snooze and when I awoke, Kresvold the blacksmith was lurking outside my house. He told me vampires had been spotted in the village and as an expert in the dead, my services were required. Three villagers had been bothered by a vampire, apparently and the town was in uproar trying to figure out what to do. The beekeeper had the most elite suggestion, as he believed the vampire was likely his nemesis, Hornet Man, and he vowed to release his carnivorous bees. Frankly, that was the best plan I'd ever heard, but Haradric asked me to look into the situation, just in case the murderous bees didn't work out. So, suddenly, I was a vampire hunter. I hope I don't end up like the last vampire hunter. I picked up my graveyard veggies profit, and apparently it had been two weeks as I earned over three gold. And then I visited my beautiful new tavern. Jerry said my first task was to create a barman doll to man the bar. From the look of it, I could also build some furniture to improve tavern quality, and later on host some events once I earned these star thingos. There was also a big kitchen downstairs, and an area where I could create more shelves, presumably to stock a bunch of beverages. I headed home, grabbed a bunch of building materials, and then returned and built the artifact display. No idea what that's for, but it is quite fancy. And I also built two tables. This raised the tavern quality up to 15. I also built some shelves downstairs. Here we go, barman doll. <laughs> That's like a ventriloquist doll. I flunked the doll down at the bar. <laughs> what? <laughs> Yorick. <laughs> Yorick the ghost has animated this ventriloquist doll to work around the clock. Yorick explained to me that I simply needed to place alcohol on the pallets downstairs and he'd do the rest. And I could collect my profit from the box. He also said that tavern quality increases the amount of customers we get, which makes sense. I built one more set of shelves and then it was time to break down this wall and create access to the entire reason for this whole charade of a tavern, the archeological machine. There's a skeleton, yeah. <laughs> It's the inventor keeper. His corpse is perfectly preserved though, so that's quite impressive. Jerry explained that artifacts could be placed in the machine, allowing us to witness scenes from the far past. Conveniently, the old graveyard keeper had compiled a list of artifacts. And first on the list was a statuette of the old god owned by Haradric. So Jerry told me to track that down so that we could begin unraveling the history of this strange world. I headed home to deal with this smelly old graveyard keeper's body, but I was ambushed by the one-eyed, one-legged shepherd. And it turns out he's a self-styled vampire hunter. And since he knows I'm the kind of bloke that hangs around corpses all day, I was his number one suspect for all the vampire shenanigans haunting the town recently. I have a feeling the dead body I happened to be carrying wasn't helping my chances, but I attempted to convince him he had the wrong man. He insisted I must eat raw garlic to prove my innocence. The bloke was unhinged, so I obliged, much to the dismay of my taste buds, but then he mused that perhaps I was one of those mutant vampires who could tolerate garlic, and concluded the only way to definitively solve the matter was to push a wooden stake through my heart and see if I die or not. I figured that wasn't in my best interest, so I promised to find him the real vampire if he'd leave me alone. He finally relented. I then dealt with old mate dead graveyard keeper's body. Got two brains? Why has his body got two brains? He was an inventor, so he was very smart, therefore two brains. Nice. I dealt with this rather rotten corpse, studied a gold nugget, and then finally fixed up Yurik's hidey hole. Once finished, he helped me move this big old stained glass window into the church. It's quite beautiful. On day 216, I stocked up the tavern with a bunch of beer and wine, and then headed to the refugee camp. I chatted to the cook, and she was depressed as she missed her kitchen, so I promised to set one up for her in the camp. For now though, I just made one more tent. I fridged one body, collected a bunch of billets with which I built some pyres, and burnt a corpse. I then concocted some zombie juice and resurrected zombie number 34. I popped this fellow 
Tyler into the porter station that had materialized when I opened my tavern. And his job will be to transport alcoholic beverages to the tavern storage area. You do a noble work, my friend. For now, I instructed him not to take the gold star wine as I use these for energy. But as you'll see later, this was actually a mistake. I crafted some tier three candles, placed black and white paint in the communist crate, and then gave my weekly sermon. I made some flour, grabbed some green slime and cooked these jellies of incredible power. And I also crafted this inspiring banner, my TMNT rat turtles. Rat turtles, tur rat, green rats, and then <laughs> revolutionary donkey banner. After that extremely articulate sentence, I placed the items in donkey's crate. I checked in on the talking skull. That's the name of my new tavern, by the way. And I found that I'd earned my first 10 silver. I then filled my bags with materials and finally got to work fixing up this strange room down here. I built the workbench, a soul container base, and a couple of chests. I also repaired the soul extractor. This thing spins corpses around crazy fast and the centrifugal force sucks the soul right out. Sounds like a banger of a theme park, right? Ride. I tried to extract the soul of one of my fridge bodies, but it wouldn't let me. So I guess souls fade away after a while. Next, I completed the soul container and Smiler helpfully explained that I can store souls in this thing and it'll slow down soul decay. I repaired this creepy soul healer machine and Smiler was back with more explanations. He said all humans are born pure, but they don't stay that way. They're corrupted by their bodies with various body parts causing different sins. And this machine uses body parts to purify souls somehow. You know what? Sounds like an even bigger banger of a theme park ride. I needed polishing paste to repair this last machine, the soul portal. So I headed out to make some and I found Donkey awaited me. He informed me the revolution was a success. The master had been captured, the horses had been exiled, and the best and brightest donkeys and rats were installing a new socialist government. Sounds like utopia to me. I collected clay, put a bunch of clay bowls on for skinny zombie to craft. I made the polishing paste and finally repaired the soul portal. And Yurik explained this thing sends souls off to the land of the dead to help mitigate any violations of the ancient contract. And you already know it, that sounds like an even bigger, bigger banger of a theme park ride. And then a body arrived. Oh, we're extracting a soul. harmed soul. I took the body out and chucked it in the fridge and then placed the soul in the soul healer. I stole some flesh from this corpse and placed it in the workbench. And this is where you can add white skulls or red skulls to body parts up to a total of three of each skull. This is an exciting prospect for raising corpse quality as you'll see later. It costs sin shards though. So I couldn't modify this flesh just yet. I then placed the flesh in the soul healer. Each soul requires body parts with different stats to be healed. This soul, for example, needed two red skull flesh to have that particular sin healed. I only had a typical white skull piece of flesh, so I didn't get much healing done this time. One sin shard and a healed soul popped out. What the? What the heck? I received seven souls gratitude for sending this healed soul on its way. I need 10 to unlock the next tech in the spiritualism tree. And even though at this point I was definitely quite confused about what I'd just done, it felt like good progress. I did a bit of chopping to stay on top of flitch production because making 10 crates per week for graveyard veggies uses heaps of flitch and then checked on my talking skull profits again, another 12 silver. And I was about two thirds of the way to my first reputation star. I also grabbed my graveyard veggies profit. I am quite the businessman. Another body arrived, so I excitedly extracted its soul and this one required three red skull and two white skull flesh. And my flesh at least had one white skull, so my healing efforts were more effective this time. And I received eight souls gratitude from the portal. This meant I had enough to unlock healer enthusiast. Remote craft control and healing from pride. I also unlocked useful equipment, updated equipment, and prayer for souls. I added the healing from pride extension to the soul healer, built a soul receiver. I had no idea what this was at this stage, but I worked out later this was part of the remote crafting system. And I also upgraded the soul extractor. I realized I'd left a body in the extractor, so I grabbed it and harvested all its organs and placed them in this chest, and then had a proper look at the workbench. As an experiment, I used two sin shards to add a white skull onto this blood. And as you can see, it went from minus one white skull to zero white skulls. I placed a wall crematorium, which is is a more convenient way to burn bodies. Great news. And I then healed another soul. Thanks to my upgrades, I could use both flesh and skin to heal this one, which meant I earned two sin shards instead of one. And I earned 13 souls gratitude, which allowed me to unlock experienced healer. I added the healing from wrath and gluttony extensions, so I can now heal using fat and blood too. I unlocked updated machines rank two, crafted a bunch of materials, including these fancy carved wood thingos, which I had never used before, and then put in another wall crematorium before getting an update from comrade donkey, informing me the revolution had failed after all. The rats seized power in a post office and declared a military dictatorship. Now the donkey situation is even worse than it was before the revolution. Oh, donkey. 
Poor, poor donkey. After that profound moral lesson on the pride and pitfalls of attempting to create utopia via political revolution, I figured it was time to continue on my quest to inject strange substances into dead bodies. I had alchemy decomposer zombie turn pumpkins into health powder. I milled down a gold nugget into gold powder. And then I realized it was Sunday, so I got distracted. Since sin shards are used to literally increase the quality of body parts and therefore the quality of corpses and zombies, I figured I needed as many as I could get. And so I wrote a gold star chapter and used it to write a gold star prayer for souls thorough cleansing. This doubles the amount of sin shards you receive for healing souls. And I wanted to test it out and see how long this effect would last for. Turns out one hour and 47 minutes. That's like 13 in-game days, very nice. I built the cook's table at the refugee camp and then collected flowers literally all night because I needed more moths. I even continued into the day and got some butterflies too. I studied a butterfly and then because I was a bit low on red points, I ate some cake and studied all my steel tools too. This earned me 100 per tool for a total of 500 red points. I milled some butterflies into chaos powder and then dealt with another body. I modified some flesh, adding one white skull and kept it in the chest here to use for future soul healings and then checked on the refugee camp. The Marquis was grateful for my help so far and gave me some rewards. Most notably a mysterious artifact called the witch's eye. I built two garden beds and then chatted to this weird bloke who offered to loan me one gold at 1% interest per day. I wasn't interested in crippling debt but I was delighted to see he sold gold materials which is very useful as gold is a pain to get otherwise. I bought some gold nuggets and powder. I dealt with another corpse and this one's soul earned me eight sin shards when I healed it, which was one per body part used in the healing times two thanks to the prayer buff. I also earned 23 souls gratitude and unlocked professional healer. I added the sloth, lust and envy extensions to the soul healer and now all seven key body parts can get involved in the healing process. I placed two more garden beds at the refugee camp and planted some crops so now they should be a little more self-sufficient up here. I upgraded the soul extracted to its highest rank three and used it to extract this fresh corpse's soul. I modified that blood some more, making it plus two white skulls, and then healed this soul using seven body parts. And as you can see, I still didn't fully heal this soul, but I earned 14 sin shards nonetheless. All my embalming prep, the constant reagent gathering, and endless googling then finally came to fruition. I made glue, alkali, and golden elixir, and used these, plus the silver elixir I'd made a while back, to finally make silver injection, lye injection, glue injection, and gold injection. Another body arrived, and in the process of healing its soul, I modified a few body parts, basically trying to match the skulls to what the soul required so that it would be healed as much as possible. I was running low on space in the morgue so I burned a couple of bodies and then took some flyers and faith to the talking skull and used one reputation star to host a graveyard fest which sounds like a raging party. These two blokes loved it. According to this I didn't serve the right alcohol for this type of party though as that face doesn't seem too impressed and I only made 19 silver. The barman then asked me to place a greeter out the front as he reckoned that'd make Haradric jealous. Sunday had rolled around but I had no beeswax for candles so my combo prayer only earned me 50 faith this week. I built a soul container three, which can hold four souls and adds plus 20 to the total souls gratitude I can store. And then I chatted to Smiler about how to heal a live human soul. He said I needed special sin shards from extra talented sinners, one for each of the seven deadly sins. To begin, I needed to track down someone especially prideful. I had someone in mind. I then finally embalmed my first corpse. First up, it was a silver injection. This removes one red skull and adds one white skull. Next, I did a gold injection, which removes two red skulls and adds two white skulls. And then the glue injection, which adds plus one white skull. I visited Haradric and finally asked him about the statuette of the ancient god, and he said he'd be happy to get rid of it and that I should ask his wife. She took me aside and told me Haradric had come back from town last week smelling of booze and perfume, and that she wanted me to find evidence of his infidelity. Goodness me, trouble in paradise. I asked Kresvold about the boy's trip to town, and he had a giant whinge about how hard life is. So I offered commiserations, and he told me Haradric had bought Chain some perfume for their upcoming anniversary. I informed Miss chain and she was offended, wondering why he didn't like her usual perfume. She said she'd rather he'd taken a mistress. Those are some interesting priorities if you ask me, but I didn't care as she gave me the statuette, my first artifact for Jerry's machine. I also asked Miss Chain about her encounter with the vampire, and she said she refused to talk about it until Haradric apologized. Haradric said she was the one that needed to apologize, as he'd seen her with a secret lover. Trouble in paradise indeed. Am I a marriage counselor today? What is going on? Miss Chain said she was asleep, so she hadn't seen anything, and obviously Haradric thinks the vampire was her lover, so these two gooses were useless. Although Miss Chain finally made herself useful when she told me that the astrologer had an encounter with vampires a while back. I took the statuette to Jerry, we placed it in the machine and saw the first flashback explaining the history of this strange world. This floating text reminiscent of Star Trek explained the origin of the world. The ancient god had created the world and three priestess sisters to serve him, as well as many people whom he provided for. After death their souls would float across the ancient bridge to the land of the dead, but like all great stories, 
love spoiled everything. I then witnessed a scene of ancient Heradric secretly meeting with ancient Miss Chain, who apparently is one of the three priestesses. She said they can never be together because of her duty to the ancient god, and Heradric stormed off, vowing not even the ancient god could stop his love. This scene is supposedly from 200 years ago, so Heradric and Miss Chain are immortal? I did not see that one coming, especially with their extremely immature marital woes. Jerry told me to track down the ancient wine flask next. I placed the statuette in the artifact display cabinet and it added plus one quality to the tavern. I returned to the morgue and gave this corpse its final injection, the lie injection, which adds plus one red skull and plus one white skull. And so all up you can use embalming to add plus five white skulls to a body using those four injections. I dealt with another soul, modifying some body parts in the process, which helped me achieve a relatively decent healing. I grabbed the 13 white skull corpse I'd made with embalming and resurrected zombie number 35, a 32% efficient zombie, by far my best undead worker so far. I placed him on the winemaking setup and took this zombie to be embalmed. I gathered a bunch of materials, made another embalming table, and replaced these two tier one soul containers with tier three. I healed yet another soul, continued embalming, and managed to get this fully embalmed zombie to 14 white skulls by giving it better intestines. Okay, I understand what I need to do. I want to try and save all plus two or three brains, hearts, and intestines because I can easily upgrade them to plus three with the organ modification in the soul room. And I think these ones are essentially useless, so I should just have them to turn into reagents or whatever, whatever I want. Basically, I had finally wrapped my head around improving bodies by this point. This boiled down to using embalming to get plus five skulls and body part modification in the soul room to get all body parts, except for the skeleton, up to plus three white skulls each, which means the theoretical best corpse possible is 26 white skulls. Making some of those became my goal. On day 234, I spoke to the astrologer about vampires. He told me he and the previous graveyard keeper had once been attacked by four vampires, but some strange magic had protected them and turned the vampires into jaws. He also said vampires can only drink group O blood and that other blood types give them cavities and ulcers. I dealt with yet another soul and kept embalming ticking along. 38% efficient zombie, let's go. I prayed the prayer for souls thorough cleansing to refresh my sin shard buff and then visited the cook at the refugee camp. She was grateful for the kitchen I made her, but found it quite different to her old kitchen back in the town. So I promised to improve it for her a little bit. Cooking table two. Oh, there you go. That's looking a little bit more bougie. Her final task was to make some beehives so the refugees can cultivate their own source of honey. I finally continued with Yurik's questline by informing him I thought the bishop was a great candidate for extremely prideful sin. To get the transformed pride sin shard, we needed to stoke his pride. So I decided to ask the poet Wagner to write some flowery praise for the bishop to read. I collected some profits from the talking skull, bought some oil and beeswax, and collected my graveyard veggies profit too. I spoke to the farmer's son about his encounter with the vampire, and he said he thought it was his dad returning home late, but when he'd caught hello, it was as if the strange man hadn't heard him, and so he'd hid under his blankets, much to his shame. I told him that if I was just 15 years old, I'd have hidden too, and he said thanks, but I'm 22. <laughs> What the heck? I also asked him about the ancient wine flask and he gave it to me, but made me promise not to tell his dad he'd been drinking. I don't know why he's so worried about it since he's 22, but I won't tell little buddy, rest easy. I bought a bunch of seeds from the farmer because it's always good to stay on top of the seeds situation. Wagner has disappeared. So we just need to write him a letter. And so I wrote to the poet a letter asking for some choice words with which to take advantage of the good bishop's ceaseless vanity. I healed another soul and then used up all my sin shards modifying these body parts. I just need to do plus one red skull on the heart and then every time I heal a soul it'll be 100% healed. I finally googled how to place a greeter in front of the talking skull and it turns out the greeter Yorick had in mind was a zombie. <laughs> uh, he's got one of those signs and he's literally chained there. Oh gosh. I healed another soul and decided to store this soul as my soul's gratitude was maxed out so there was no point sending it through the portal. Not that I even knew how to use soul's gratitude at this point, but whatever. I gave the ancient wine flask to Jerry and it was time to watch another flashback. This one depicted the three priestesses granting an audience to the peasants and it revealed that not only is Miss Chain an ancient priestess, Clotho is too. In this scene, she had a vision from the ancient god, warning of the terror to come. I asked Jerry where he was in all this as the whole point of this exercise was to learn about his past and he said there's plenty more to come. He told me the next artifacts to collect were the ancient door hinge and legionary helm. I placed the flask on display and then dug up the ancient hinge like three meters away from the tavern. This flashback depicted a body being sent towards the bridge and the land of the dead. Whoa, 
It's levitating. This old bloke was Diggus, no doubt my best friend Dig, and Clotho came to yell at him to give her the keys to the portal so that she could use the portal to prevent whatever she'd seen in her vision. Dig refused as he feared the portal was too dangerous, and Clotho told him he had cupcakes for brains, which is an extremely accurate statement. So basically what I'm getting from these flashbacks so far is that half the village are immortals that were alive 200 years ago when the whole world went to crap. Fascinating. I checked the mail to find the letter from Wagner containing the flattering poem for the bishop. I built the beehives at the refugee camp, and the cook was suitably impressed. She taught me a bunch of her culinary secrets as a reward. I literally never bothered with cooking again, so these were useless, but nice to have, I guess. I bought some more gold nuggets and powder from the moneylender bloke, which sets me back over two gold each time, by the way. I finally switched my vineyard cues to infinite and grabbed a bag full of grapes and hops, which I chucked in the cellar, before changing the beverage porter's orders so that he'd take gold star wine to the tavern too, since I was no longer worried about running out. By now, I'd managed to fully deck out the soul healer, so it was now full of plus three, plus three body parts. This meant I could turn my sin shards towards making the perfect zombie. I gave this fella a plus three heart, brain, intestines, and flesh, and he was up to 17 white skulls already. I hacked out a number of bodies on day 239, swapping body parts around preparing for embalming. I also cleared out all the crappy organs I had lying around and queued them up to be decomposed in order to free up heaps of storage. I crafted a top up of embalming fluids, queued up a bunch of billets for pyres, and then burnt these four bodies that had been harvested for all their worth while I was going nuts in the morgue. By the way, I did have the more convenient cremation ovens inside now, but I opted not to use these as they yielded three ash instead of five, and I wanted all the ash I could get. Oh, 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 oh. It's beautiful. It's beautiful to behold, there's no doubt about it. I unlocked the rest of the spiritualism tech tree, granting me access to the best grave decorations in the game. I crafted three gold star marble statues, with which I crafted a plus 15 quality marble sculpture. And I also crafted a plus 11 grave fence using marble and a gold jewelry detail. I made a second stone cutter and some more trunks in the yard, zhuzhed up this zombie to 30% efficiency and chucked him on there. I then bombarded the bishop with some grade A flattery. Oh blessed and mighty highness, higher none could ever be. Overwhelming beauty, kindness, everyone's impressed by thee. Wheresoever you step, the gloom seems to drift a world away. Whensoever you speak, your wisdom drips from every word you say. Pride charged shard. Pride charged shard. It's kind of hard to say. All right, sweet. I banged out another church service, to which the masses said, nice, and then placed my new grave decorations on this crappy body's grave. Look at this. <laughs> now I'll put a 26 heart body in there and that'll be 26 points in one grave. Holy moly. I informed Yurik I had a pride sin shard and he sat down for some soul healing. He said it made him feel a bit funny so he went for a rest but not before finally handing over the instructions to remote crafting. I now had the ability to control most of my crafting devices from the map. So for example, I can queue up zombie crafting or alchemy through the map menu rather than running to tell the zombie directly. All I have to do is create a soul receiver at each location. I queued up infinite polished brick of marble, as I have ambitions to make lots of those graveyard decorations, and made a bunch of chisels and chucked them in a trunk for old mate zombie to use in his polishing efforts. I healed a soul, spent some time noodling around with a bunch of corpses, and then grabbed some water to keep up Brewman zombie's supply of H2O. I placed a soul receiver in my yard and then decided to check on Yurik. He was nowhere to be found, and he'd left a note saying he'd headed into town. This was strange, as he's supposed to be on the lam after his crime spree. I found him at the tavern endearing himself to the locals. The merchant was in town, so I bought five gold jewelry details from him, as I'll need these to make top tier grave fences. I then modified some skin, flesh, and blood, and continued work on Mr. Zombie. All right, we're adding plus three blood, plus three fat, plus three skin, up to 26. 65% efficient zombie. This is a maxed out zombie, very juicy. I whacked him on the wine making setup because you know I love wine. And I gave old mate a new job in the yard. As day 243 dawned, I chatted to Yurik about the next two sins to heal, wrath and gluttony. I suggested the Inquisitor was quite an angry fellow and Yurik thought it would be effective to bring him the ashes of a witch. I thought this would make him gleeful rather than wrathful, but fair enough. As for gluttony, we plotted to bring the merchant a most delicious sauce that he'd never encountered before. And surely this would bring out the over eater in him. I added a big old pump to the refugee camp well, bought a bunch of gold goodies from this bloke, instructed the jewelry zombie to keep working away, and then paid Clotho a visit. I asked her if she had any witch's ash for me, and she did, because I guess she likes burning her competition, but she required some honey in exchange. I also asked her to give me a delectable sauce recipe, and she gave me the recipe for poor man's mayonnaise. I built a soul receiver in the morgue, and then harvested organs from a bunch of bodies. I ended up with a nice body pile up out in the bushes. Once day 245 dawned, I wandered back to Clotho with some 
some honey and got a nice dusty pile of witch ash. On my way to the Inquisitor, who conveniently happened to be chilling on Witch Hill like a weirdo today, I remotely queued up some zombie alchemy shenanigans. Very convenient. I thought it would use up the soul's gratitude resource, but it didn't seem to, so I was confused. Anyway, I taunted the Inquisitor with the ash, and I finally realized the genius of Yurik's plan. I explained to the Inquisitor that the witches used the witch ash for occult shenanigans, and he was blasted with a big dose of irony as he realized the witch ash he'd painstakingly created was then used for heretical activities. It made the old fella livid, and I got my wrath charged shard. I grabbed some oil, eggs, and salt, and whipped up some mayo in preparation for the merchant's visit in a few days, and then spent some time modifying body parts and managed to get this corpse to 23 white skulls before running out of sin shards. I hit up my zombie vineyards, which were at a standstill due to the trunks filling up, so I grabbed some grapes and then checked in at the Talking Skull Tavern. On goal 42, because I'm actually selling red wine now, it sells for way more. How much it sells for? So red wine sells for about five times more than beer. That was good to know. I chatted to Rosa, my final line of inquiry regarding the vampire visitations, and she informed me she had been bitten by the vampire, but he hadn't enjoyed the taste of her blood, which she found greatly offensive. I understand the feeling. It's sad when you're not delicious. I then used my elite Sherlock Holmes deduction to conclude the vampire was a deaf stranger, and I was immediately suspicious of Master Alaric up at the refugee camp. I went and had a chat with him, and when I say chat with him, I mean I yelled at him, and he misunderstood literally everything I was saying because his ears are about as useful as my nipples. In the end, he called me a fool for believing vampires are real, but I spotted the green sore on his wrist, which the astrologer had told me is a symptom of a vampire on a bad diet. You can't fool me, Alaric. I am Sherlock Holmes reincarnate. I then visited the farmer, as he has the legionary helm artifact I'm after. I asked to enter his home, but he told me he only allows fellow farmers he can talk shop with into his house. He told me to prove my farming chops by bringing him a carrot as big as a log. I then burned four more holiday out corpses that I'd let pile up, and I reveled in the flames, before lighting the church candles and leading a nice juicy combo prayer church service. I continued prepping corpses and embalming, and once night fell, I went and lurked outside Master Alaric's tent. And sure enough, the silly old bloodsucker went bat mode and flew off towards the village. The vampire hunting shepherd attempted to stop him, but he's so deaf he completely missed that he was being waylaid. I really like how the village watch is wandering around mid cutscene, saying the villagers are safe as we yell at a deaf vampire. Things escalated until Master Alaric whipped out a flashback and suddenly we were back in his tent. He randomly stole part of my hearing while I was knocked out, so we no longer had to yell apparently. He said his former captors made him a vampire to torture him, and he only drinks blood when he's absolutely desperate. And he explained that the ancient curse was back and he was trying to stop it, before thousands of bloodthirsty zombies are unleashed upon the world. I have heaps of zombies and they're really helpful, so I don't really know what the problem is. He said we needed to find whoever killed the fourth graveyard keeper, my predecessor, as they are the ones who triggered the ancient curse. And then he passed out, desperately thirsty for blood. I headed to the morgue, grabbed some blood and returned it to him so he could slurp it up. He thought the corpse blood wasn't particularly tasty, but he perked up nonetheless. He said the best place to start our investigation was tracking down the vampires that tortured him. He also gave me his vampiric sun cream, which I took to Haradric and claimed I'd taken it off the vampire's dead body, just to make the village think the vampire business was concluded so they'd stop snooping around. I visited Clotho and asked her to enlarge my carrot, and for some reason she took that request the wrong way. Eventually she took my true meaning and said she could, but only if I organized a date for her with Corey. I healed another soul and chopped up the corpse, and then headed out to the scene of the astrologer's vampire shenanigans of 30 years ago. What is this? The witch's eye put me in a weird trance to see visions of the past. The visions told of the astrologer and old graveyard keeper making a deadly cocktail and getting outrageously drunk. And just as they were vomiting and falling over themselves, the four vampires attacked, only to be turned into jawbones by some mysterious magic. Lucky for me, one of the jawbones was still buried here, so I dug it up. I spent some time working on corpses. I was progressively improving multiple at once by this point, and then I asked Corey if he wanted to go on a date with a beautiful woman. He said absolutely, and then I told him the beautiful woman was Clotho, and he said crazy old ladies aren't quite his type. I then framed the date as a business meeting, and Corey was all about that because he loves sweet, sweet coin, so I guess it will be the old bait and switch. Lure him in with the promise of money, and before he knows it, he's got a wife and 13 kids. I also gave the merchant his mayo, and he enjoyed it so much the feather in his cap stood on end, and I got my gluttony sin shard. I then fully modified some blood, the final piece of the puzzle for this corpse, bringing it up to 26 white skulls. I buried it with the shiny grave decorations. 26 from one grave. 
That's crazy. I performed the second soul healing on Yurik's soul. And I honestly had no idea what this was doing to him. I guess it somehow cleansed him of all his past gluttony and wrath. Either way, he was once again tired after the procedure, so he went to have a rest. I kept my alchemy production chugging along and then chopped up a bunch of trees because each tree drops a couple of sticks. These sticks kept chisel production moving, which in turn kept polished marble production moving. I made five more speed potions, which was frustrating because it used up all the blood I had on hand. But there's no way I was going without my zippy run speed. I had a snooze and when I awoke this inquisitor Lady Beatrice was watching me sleep. She said I had a most excellent beard. She also sprayed a weird perfume on me and she told me she was hunting down the escaped prisoners. I pretended I had no idea what she was talking about but she was disturbingly close to finding the refugees. I spent the night working on corpses and body parts and got this corpse up to 20 white skulls and on day 51 I crafted a bunch of these top quality grave fences using all the gold jewelry details I'd been buying. I placed some of these on the graves that were as yet unfenced and popped the rest in a trunk. I paid Clotho a visit and asked her if she can disenchant the jawbone, which I guess would turn it back into a vampire, but that was beyond her. She did give me the recipe for memory tincture and said I could spray some in my eyeballs while holding the jawbone to learn more about its story. I also told her I'd successfully secured her a date and she gave me a big carrot. <laughs> I got a big carrot. I got a big boy carrot. I healed another soul, got this body up to 23 white skulls, and decided to resurrect it into zombie number 36, just to make space in the morgue. I then made some memory tincture. It's pretty in both eyes. Ow. I had to spray it three times before it finally worked, but eventually I saw a vision. This must be the four vampires that attacked the astrologer. And this mystery woman ordered them to turn Master Alaric into a vampire as a means of torture. It seems like Alaric was telling the truth, but who is the woman in the gold and black cloak? I healed yet another soul and got my second zombie up to max efficiency. You can see he's also got seven red skulls, but these have no effect on zombies, so happy days. I chucked him on beer production. I checked on Yurik and once again he was missing in action. This time he was hanging out with Kresvo and rambling about how the village is in shambles. Some more strange behavior from the mysterious visitor. I then paid the talking skull a visit, and as you can see, I'd sold exclusively red wine as I'd filled up the barman's inventory since it's more profitable. I restocked the cellar with grapes and hops and then gave my weekly sermon, refreshing my sin shard booster buff. I then gave the farmer his enormous carrot. This impressed him and he let me in his house. I immediately stole the legionary helm from his bedside chest. Sorry, mate, but you really shouldn't trust a bloke with a giant carrot. I took it to the archeological machine and watched another movie with Jerry. This scene told of four men plotting, Heradric, Kresvold, Jove, and Lucius. Obviously we know Heradric and Kresvold, but I'm not sure who the other two are. They're definitely bad influences though. Heradric was reluctant, but ultimately they convinced him to find a way to steal the keys to the portal off Diggus so that they could betray the ancient god and live the lives they want. The next three artifacts on the list were the ancient lockpick, priest's medallion, and legionary dagger. I immediately asked Dig for the priest's medallion, but he went on a rant about cake and how he needed booze as a preservative. I then asked Kresvold about the legionary dagger, and he said he'd give it to me if I spoiled Heradric's happy mood. He suggested I get Miss Charm to perform in my tavern to annoy him. I love petty behavior for the sake of making people unhappy, so that sounded like a great plan to me. And then I asked the miller about the ancient lockpicks. He told me someone stole his invitation to perform in a comedy show, so I snooped around the wheat to figure out what had happened. I found the beekeeper being a weirdo. Honestly, I had no idea what the heck was going on, but the quest told me to talk to the lighthouse keeper next, so off I went. Sure enough, it was the aspiring comedian lighthouse keeper that stole the invitation. I told him I'd host a comedy show for him to perform in my tavern if he gave the invitation back. And he agreed, but he said he needed a drum kit or his jokes won't land. I headed to the Talking Skull and found I now had the option to do a comedy show. So I hosted it and honestly, the lighthouse keeper killed it. I laughed like this at his funnies. <laughs> and he gave me the miller's invitation back. I visited Yurik and we discussed the final three sins and decided our target for sloth was the astrologer, for lust was Miss Charm and for envy was Snake. I spent some time working on corpses and as day 254 dawned, I warned the Marquis about Lady Beatrice and he asked me to upgrade the camp some more as it seemed clear they were in for the long haul hiding out up here. I immediately built another tent. I then paid Miss Charm a visit. I paid her 20 silver to come perform at my tavern sometime and then offered to have a master dancer teach her some sensual dance moves and Yurik did the rest. Goodness gracious me. Cover your eyes, everyone. This PG-13 Plus display earned me the Lust Sin Shard. I healed another soul, and with that, I'd filled up all 12 storage slots in my soul containers. I then made a bunch of porcelain funeral urns with all that ash I've been collecting, because I wanted to see what the deal was with columbariums. These provide 20 quality, but they take up an awkward amount of space, more than one grave worth, so I figured they weren't worth it. I'd rather max out as many individual graves as possible. I brought Dig some booze I'd concocted, and he immediately lit it on fire for some reason. We've got some Molotov cocktail business going on here. And I 
I received the priest's medallion in return. I also informed Kresvold I'd convinced Miss Charm to perform in my tavern, so he gave me the legionary dagger. I returned to the morgue to heal a soul and keep the embalming train rolling, and then asked Jerry if he knew anything about the vampire queen from the flashback. He said there are only two concrete sources of truth in this world, housewives and ghosts, and he promised to chat up the ghosts to see if they knew anything. I also made Snake unbearably envious by making up some rumors about the greatest heist ever being pulled off in the town. Since Snake fancies himself the greatest thief in the world, this rumor worked a treat and I earned myself the envy charged sin shard. I then finally worked out a great use for remote crafting. That's actually very useful. I can turn the embalmings on. From, from a distance. Since each injection takes a few minutes, this was indeed very handy. I then cleared some space down here in the morgue and placed two more embalming tables so I can improve more bodies at once. And I worked day 256 away in the morgue. I then acted on some amazing advice I received in a comment. Clotho sells some of the stuff that costs blood to make. Alkali costs blood. Five speed potions though, that is huge. This finding meant Clotho's shop became a regular visit ongoing, and I barely had to use blood for alchemy for the rest of the run. I found I was out of water for beer production, but I really didn't care anymore since wine sells better anyway. I restocked embalming fluid, and then visited the refugee camp and found there was enough happiness in the air for me to upgrade the storehouse. And then I asked Jerry if the ghost had whispered him anything of interest. He said there was a ghost weirdo lurking on the eighth level of the dungeon, whose leg had been taken by the vampire queen. He said I needed an amulet of communist donkey hair, human intestines and wax in order to make this particular ghost appear. I had a stack of 45 sin shards piled up, so I perfected a bunch of body parts. This is quite a tedious process, as you have to do it one skull at a time. I also properly organized my storage, getting rid of some crappy organs that were somehow still lying around, and designating racks to hold plus three, plus two, and plus one white skull body parts, respectively. I visited the astrologer, and since he's so sad and lazy, all I had to do to earn the sloth sin shard from him was ask him how his day was going. Although I will say the game is being a bit unfair, conflating depression and laziness. Shout out to people fighting depression. You're not lazy, you're unwell. Get the help you need and keep fighting. Not you though, Mr. Astrologer, you just need to get over it. I gave the Miller his comedy show invitation back, in return for which I received the ancient lockpick, and I asked Donkey for some hair. I told him I wanted to frame it and put it above my bed to inspire me to be a better communist, and he loved this idea. Ooh. <laughs> that was gnarly. <laughs> I made the pagan amulet of spirit summoning and wandered down to the eighth level of the dungeon. The first thing the one-legged ghost asked me was, why do you have that disgusting amulet? <laughs> <laughs> Jerry trolled me. I asked him for help tracking down the vampire queen, but he said that helping people goes against his philosophy of not caring about anyone or anything. That is a pretty gangster attitude, to be fair. I crafted a bunch of candles using beeswax I'd bought from the beekeeper, lit up the church, and prayed the combo prayer. I then performed the final soul healing for sloth, lust, and envy on Yurik, and afterwards he said he felt like part of him had been erased. That sounded worrying, and once again he went off to have a rest. I made a bunch of pigskin paper from bat wings, which I turned into clean paper, which I used to make a bunch of flies at the printing press and then use the flies to host a Miss Charm special. Ooh, everything went red. Sensual. Oh, this is banger music. Yeah. Wobble bobble doo doo doo. Got the spotlight up there. Look at that. Croissant. 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 Love. <laughs> it's a banger. Now give me gold, everyone. Let's see. Let's see how this does. One gold thirty. That's not bad. Red wine seems to work well with the Miss Charm song event, so this became my default way to spend reputation stars for the rest of the run. I then watched some more movies with Jerry. First up, The Ancient Lockpick. This one was set at Ancient Witch Hill. Haradric had tied up Diggis and stolen the portal keys. Kresvold, Jove, and Lucius joined him to activate the portal. Apparently the portal grants wishes, so they essentially asked it to overthrow the ancient god. The snake in the garden. Oh, yeah. Master. Next up was the priest's medallion. Three years on and it's Diggis, old school and faithful to the old god, versus the master, anti-religion and pro-unemployment benefits. The people appear unable to resist the allure of a government handout, so public opinion sways in the master's favor. The traditions of the world are crumbling and the ancient god is slowly being forgotten. Next was the legionary dagger, and this showed a scene in which the aqueduct had run dry. The levitating corpses were stuttering along their way, and Diggis despaired that the ancient god was abandoning humanity due to the master's heresy. The next 
two artifacts to hunt for with a logger's belt buckle and some clay shards. By the way, this is what the artifact cabinet looked like at this point. I upgraded the campfire at the refugee camp and this place is really starting to come together. Next up, the Marquis requested one more tent and a workshop. I did some chores, including switching the zombie vineyard to grow seven parts grape and one part hops because I no longer really cared about beer. I spent a spell in my favorite place, the morgue, and then had a chat with Yurik. He seemed in better spirits and planned a night out at the village before heading off to adventure towards whatever was next for him. I then recalled something I noticed earlier. The big stained glass window in the church had six spaces available and I had a suspicion. Sure enough, I was able to place the six special sin shards to complete the image. I headed out to Clotho's, collecting sticks on the way because for some reason I was always running out of sticks. I bought out her inventory of useful reagents and potions. I then asked for the shepherd's help with the spirit in the dungeon. The shepherd is a certified goose on the loose obsessed with hunting monsters. So he thought we were there to kill the ghost, but it worked out regardless somehow. And the one-legged apparition told us the vampire queen had told him he could get his leg back in the misty quagmire. The shepherd told me the Marquis's dad, Teodoro Senior, had found the Necronomicon there and the deathly book had driven he and his wife mad, resulting in their murder by the Inquisition. I modified some body parts and cooked myself up another max efficiency zombie, zombie number 37, and I whacked this one on the alchemy decomposer. I collected a cheeky one gold 20 from the talking skull and one gold 65 from graveyard veggies and then had another snooze. I awoke to Haradric and Kresvold's disgruntlement. And frankly, boys, I know about your betrayal of Dig 200 years ago, so I'm pretty sure you don't have the moral high ground on whatever this is about. In any case, they escorted me to Haradric's tavern. Apparently, Yurik had quite a night last night. He'd gotten wildly inebriated and destroyed much of the village before disappearing. And since I was the one who'd been providing him lodgings, apparently the responsibility fell on me to fix everything up. I chatted to Smiler about Yurik's madness, and he told me he'd heard screams earlier. Yurik crying about how he'd lost himself, which I guess is the moral of this tale. Don't get a weird machine to mess with your soul or you'll go crazy. I burned some bodies and worked on improving this zombie before collecting a bunch of materials and repairing this table that Yurik must have body slammed. I then did one of the most random quests ever, which in a game like this is saying something. I asked the logger for his belt buckle and he refused to give it to me because he's a big fan of it. The beekeeper came out of nowhere and said he'd help me get the buckle, but only if I dug up a barrel of honey that he buried for some reason. He couldn't dig it up because he has enemies everywhere, apparently. He also threatened to kill me with his attack bees. I dug up the honey like five meters away and then gave it to the weird bloke and he gave me some honey plaster for the logger's bad back. I gave it to him and it worked a treat and he gave me the belt buckle in return. We love a happy ending. I then talked to Adam the Potter, who I honestly had no idea was a character in this game until now. I asked him for the clay shards, but he said I must improve my tavern first for some reason. I repaired the blacksmith's outhouse door, which must have been knocked off its hinges by Yurik's explosive diarrhea, and then returned to the morgue to deal with the body. While there, I yoinked the max efficiency zombie from the brewery and put it on the alchemy table, because as we've established, I no longer care about beer, but alchemy is definitely useful. I gave my weekly sermon, refreshing my sin shard buff yet again, and then brought the ancient belt buckle to Jerry. This scene was set another two years in the future, and Jove and Lucius were telling the masses that the master had died. With his dying breath, he'd appointed Jove king. That doesn't sound suspicious to me at all. His first act as king was to declare a holy war on the ancient god. I grabbed some materials and upgraded the tavern, enlarging it, which made room for some barrels and extra tables, and the quality rose all the way to 47. I returned to Adam and informed him of the upgrade, and his next task for me was to get rid of the two hooligans that lurk outside his house at night and torture him. I then cleaned up after Yurik some more. I repaired this knocked over egg basket, the beekeeper's hives, and Adam's pottery table. Next job on the list was to clean up a cow that Yurik had painted. Painted? <laughs> I got distracted by a fresh corpse and was able to get yet another zombie up to max efficiency. I put this one on the logging tree because sometimes I need to craft heaps of wood materials and I was sick of having a 10% efficient slow noob zombie replenish my log supply. I then discovered Yorick was the one pestering poor Adam. Oh, and Yorick's been trolling him. I told him to give it a rest or I'd fire him from the tavern that he works at 24 seven for no pay. Somehow that threat worked and he left to go bother some other loser. I repaired the farmer's lantern, another of Yurik's victims, and then washed the big moo moo with a handful of ash. The last things to clean up were the door of Kresvold's outhouse, which Yurik's diarrhea must have blasted all the way over here. It had Sard the town written on it. And finally this clothesline. And with that, I was done cleaning up after crazy Yurik. I told Adam that I'd scared off the ghost that had been bothering and earned myself the clay shards. I healed another soul and then built the Marquis's workshop at the refugee camp. I then spoke to Snake about the Keeper's book that Yurik had left behind, as it was still missing one page. I kind of lost track of the story, I'm not gonna lie, but basically he told me something that led me to believe Jerry might have it. And sure enough, the missing page was randomly behind Jerry's crate. The reason this is important is because it explained the story behind Smiler. He had been an 18 year old man with an illness and they'd attempted to heal him with the soul healer, but what they'd been left with was a soulless body and Smiler, the disembodied soul. Smiler's last wish was to be sent through the soul portal to the land of the dead. Farewell, good 
Smiler. And with that, the Better Save Soul DLC questline was completed. This DLC definitely had the most lackluster story, but it did introduce some very cool mechanics in the soul healing, body part modifying, and remote crafting. It also had plenty of hilarious moments. I asked the Marquis about the Misty Quagmire on day 268, and he was immediately struck by fear. He refused to talk about it, but said he'd help me once I'd finished building up the refugee camp for him. I chatted to this Undertaker lady. She told me she needed five iron chisels and 10 wood wedges. I went and grabbed them for her, and the next thing she wanted was a workbench. I then paid the talking skull a visit. Four gold, 40. How many days has it been? It's only been a few days. Holy dooly. The recent tavern upgrades were paying dividends. No doubt, no doubt. I headed downstairs and gave the clay shards to Jerry. This scene showed the mindless destruction of the ancient village. Heradric was clearly regretting the carnage he'd set in motion, and he was fearful for Chain's safety. After all, she is the whole reason he wanted to overthrow the ancient god in the first place. Resvold assured him she'd no doubt fled to the swamp. Next up, Jerry told me to look out for the amulet of the ancient god and some ancient shackles. I spoke to the lighthouse keeper about the amulet of the ancient god. God. And he asked me if a loud and obese woman had been asking about him in the tavern, and he refused to give me the amulet. I then developed a plan to get high quality bodies into the graveyard while using the least amount of sin shards possible, since they were still quite a scarce resource. In short, I fully improved all body parts except for blood and fat, because those cost too many sin shards. Using this method, I made two 20 white skull corpses. I buried them both in the graveyard. I crafted a bunch of gold star marble busts, which I used to make a couple of 15 quality grave statues, and whacked these on the graves. I enjoyed a glorious church service bought some sauerkraut, chopped every little tree I laid eyes on to get sticks, and queued up a bunch of silver quality chisels. I dug up copious amounts of sand, which I chucked in the furnace to turn into glass, and then dug up copious amounts of clay to be turned into clay bowls. I also queued up a bunch of polishing paste. I dealt with a body, did a collection of grapes from the vineyard, and queued up a bunch of lenses using the glass and polishing paste I'd spent ages crafting. I also made a bunch more trunks in the cellar, as it would be a disaster if I ran out of space for wine, which I was still drinking constantly by the way. The alcohol continues to fuel me. I transported two more full bags of produce from the vineyard, and I hosted another of Miss Charm's performances at the Talking Skull. She whipped out the exact same song, but the people loved it nonetheless. A cheeky two gold 75 just like that. I built the Undertaker's workplace at the refugee camp, kept things ticking along in the morgue, and then paid Snake a visit. He told me it had been over a month since his cultists had captured an Inquisitor and drowned them in the river, so he believed they needed motivation. He said he'd steal the amulet of the ancient god off the lighthouse keeper if I hosted a rat race in my tavern, because apparently a rat race will be a great motivational tool. I queued up 15 more silver star chisels and then built the rat race table, which looks quite marvelous actually. <laughs> I guess those are the lanes for the rats. You love to see it. Does that mean I can do like a Right races event. Okay, I just need two reputation. I was sick of constantly telling this zombie to break down stone, iron, and marble chunks, so I decided to rejig the way materials were delivered from the quarry. I made two stone cutters up here and had zombie bros break down the stone and iron chunks on site and instructed the porter zombies to only take marble chunks plus all the broken down materials. This means I'll only have to break down marble back at base, meaning I can just queue it up infinitely and never have to think about it again. I informed the undertaker her workbench was ready and her next task for me was to deliver five gold stars chisels. I then spent almost two days in the morgue, and by the end of it I had buried two more 20 white skull bodies in the graveyard. I could have made these into highly efficient zombies, but now that alchemy and winemaking were at max, I didn't feel a particular need to improve the efficiency of anything else. I gave my weekly sermon, and my efforts in increasing the graveyard quality by about 50 only made me like four silver, so that was definitely not the most inspiring money-making venture, but at least the graves look nice. I built the final tent at the refugee camp, made a bunch more trunks in the workyard, and as day 278 dawned, I went digging in search of the ancient shackles. I found them down here. I made some black paint, which I used to make ink, which I used to make a rather ridiculous amount of flyers. And I used these to host a family-friendly rat race. <laughs> what the heck, man? That was a hugely inspiring race, no doubt, no doubt. I gave the Undertaker her five chisels, and she taught me a bunch of useless grave decoration recipes in return. With that, the Marquis also offered me his thanks, and a nice juicy reward. One gold. Oh, the marble heads are useful. Oh, universal bag. These bags take up one inventory slot and offer an additional nine slots. Very juicy. I chatted to the Tanner, who said her son was fired and fined when he sneezed during one of the king's ceremonies, which is fair enough, no one likes a sneezer. And she said she had no way of supporting him now that she'd been forced to flee. 
and so she asked me to build her a new workshop. I had Zombie Alchemist brew up some tanning agent, I grabbed some complex parts, and made four more universal bags out of human skin. Very disgusting, but very handy. I immediately filled three of the universal bags with building materials, so that I'd always have stuff on hand for fetch quests and building activities. No more teleporting home every time I need something. I chatted to Snake and he already knew of the roaring success of my rat race, so he'd burgled the amulet for me. Now that the refugee camp was up to scratch, the Marquis was ready to talk to me about the Misty Quagmire. Despite his hatred of the place, he eventually relented and took me there. It was predictably creepy. The witch's eye detected a ritual performed using the Necronomicon here long ago, conducted by the Vampire Queen and her minions. It involved that weirdo in the dungeon's leg for some reason, so I was able to dig that up. I also saw another woman, hidden in the bushes, who was discovered by the Vampire Queen, and for some reason she killed all the vampires accompanying her. A strange sequence of events. But I was able to find a vampire shoe. Perhaps some memory tincture to the eyeball will reveal more. I concocted three more memory tincture, and once again it took three sprays to the eyeball, but eventually it worked. I saw a vision of a weird bloke, Carl, chilling in the bath. He was one of the vampires working for the Vampire Queen. And though his brothers weren't fans of working for her, he insisted the pay was worth it. And he spoke of one day buying the post office with the donkeys. And so I had a clue. I should speak to Donkey and figure out if this Carl bloke is his master. I gave the one-legged ghost his leg back and he was over the moon. I asked him what happened to not caring about anything and he said, screw you good times. Jerry and I then watched the Amulet of the Ancient God movie. Heradric dragged the wounded Diggus into the priestess's camp, hidden in the swamp. Clotho was furious at him, and asked why he had betrayed them, and he explained it was for his love of Miss Chain. She laughed at the irony of that because Miss Chain had been captured and was on death row, and so Heradric ran off to rescue her. Diggus, for his part, had eaten two golden apples in order to survive this long, and we all know that golden apples make you a genius. And so Clotho insisted he must write the Necronomicon with his newfound brilliance, so that they can destroy their enemies with it. And if he does that, they'll heal him. Next up was the Ancient Shackle, which showed Heradric rescuing Miss Chain, insisting to her that they could now be together, that their love could blossom. Love? She asked. How can there be love when the entire world is ruined? The next artifacts on the list were the Ancient Pickaxe, Ancient Keys, and a mystery relic buried somewhere on Witch Hill. Adam had the Ancient Keys, so I tried to gain entry to his house by asking if I could see his exquisite pottery collection. He was unnecessarily suspicious, and ended up demanding that I prove I'm a top tier potter myself before he'd let me in. I brought him some porcelain pitchers, but he wasn't impressed. He wanted something rarer. I healed a soul, and I had saved up over 60 sin shards, so I got to work putting together another 20 white skull body. While in the middle of that, I ran into Donkey, and I asked him who his master was. Turns out Vampire Carl did indeed fulfill his dream of owning the post office, so I asked Donkey to bring him to me. I said I wanted to lecture him about the sins of private property, and this got Donkey on board with the plan. He's a sucker for anything anti-capitalist. I buried the body I'd been working on, and before I knew it, Donkey was back with his tied up master Carl. I attempted to interrogate him, but as soon as I mentioned the vampire queen in the black and gold cloak, his lips sealed shut. Jerry told me my interrogation technique was terrible, so I enlisted the help of the shepherd. If anyone can get this bloke to talk, it's the unhinged goose on the loose. He tried his best, which somehow involved me eating garlic and blowing my stinky breath in Carl's face, but nothing worked until the shepherd began singing. His voice was so bad that Carl immediately folded. Carl told me the woman in the black and gold cloak wasn't a vampire queen at all. She was a powerful magician who spoke in old-timey language. They were working for her because she promised to cure them of their bloodthirst, but she betrayed them. He told me that in the Misty Quagmire, when she was enacting the ritual with the Necronomicon, the spy in the bushes was a woman with red hair. The vampires had been ordered to kill her, but when the woman in the black and gold cloak saw who it was, she had killed all the vampires in a rage. Perhaps the red-haired woman survived. Could it be Miss Chain? I headed up to Witch Hill and found this digging spot up here, where I found the clay pot of tar. I then asked Miss Chain about the incident in the Misty Quagmire, and she immediately got rather defensive. I apologized, but insisted I must hear her story as I'm trying to stop the ancient curse. She said she couldn't tell me, because if she did, they'd kill her sister Clotho. She ran off, but I tracked her down on the beach, and asked her to explain. She told me it was Clotho who did the Necronomicon ritual. It was her sister who had killed the fourth keeper, and unleashed the ancient curse. Oh dear, the, the drama, it's peak drama. <laughs> Miss Chain had indeed been the one in the bushes watching the ritual, and when Clotho realized she'd ordered the vampires to kill her own sister, she'd vaporized them all and then returned to her hut and drunk a wild cocktail of potions in an attempt to kill herself. She didn't die though, she only succeeded in destroying her memory. Sunday had rolled around, so it was sermon time, and then I put together and buried another two 20 white skull corpses. I built the Tanner's workshop, and for my next task, the Tanner asked me to put together an animal farm for her. I informed Alaric that Clotho was the one responsible for the return of the ancient curse, and we immediately went to confront her. The only problem was she has amnesia and is rather crazy. She thought that Master Alaric was here to sweep her off her feet in the greatest love story ever told. This was rather frustrating, but Alaric came up with a plan. Black magic. Oh lordy. Oh, it's 
getting out of hand. We went inside her rather foggy mind somehow, and I answered a bunch of graveyard keeper trivia to help restore Clotho's memory. I gave only correct answers because I have an IQ of at least 13, and Master Alaric was confident it had worked, but somehow it didn't. Someone or something interfered, and Clotho remained an amnesiac lunatic obsessed with getting married to Master Alaric. The good master fell into despair and basically gave up on stopping the ancient curse. I had a snooze and when I awoke, guards surrounded my house. They said I was under arrest in the name of King Joe the Seventh and escorted me to the mountain fort. Haradric had been captured too and our crime was harboring the refugees and our punishment was to be burned at the stake. Lady Beatrice was there and she appeared to be the one who had tracked us down and turned us into the Lord Commander. He quoted a law regarding heretics as justification for roasting us alive, but Haradric came in clutch with the counter law, detailing that that only applies if the involved defendants have hairy feet, if the crime involves cattle, and if it occurs during odd years. Good thinking with the loopholes, Haradric, although I do have very hairy feet. Anyway, the Lord Commander let us go, but he made clear he was coming with a vengeance for the refugees. I spent some time in the morgue, and I was making use of these convenient crematoriums by this point, as I no longer cared about saving up ash. I then tried to buy the ancient pickaxe from Kukul. He said he'd consider it, but only if I helped him with his hump first. He wanted to look like everyone else. I asked the merchant if he had any bougie vases for Adam, but I was too late. He'd just sold them to the beekeeper. It's well established that the beekeeper is insane, so it turned out he'd bought the vases because he knew Adam wanted them, and he believed Adam is his nemesis hornet man. I suggested we poison the vases and give them to Adam. For some reason, Dig had stolen his poisoned honey though, and let's be honest, I had no idea what was going on. I just ended up having an absurd conversation with the old fella, which eventually resulted in me getting this poisoned cake. I took it to the beekeeper, we smushed it in the vases, and I took the vases to Adam and simply warned him not to eat the weird poisonous substance, because as much as I do enjoy desecrating corpses on the daily, I don't really want to murder the local potter. He finally allowed me inside his home and I yoinked the ancient keys. I wandered over to Clotho and asked her if she could help with Kukul's hunchback. She gave me a scroll that should do the trick, as long as I also had a dark organ. I crafted a bunch of grave fences, filling up more than an entire trunk, and then as I ran to visit Kukul, I sang this classic. And shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes. Heads, shoulders, knees and toes, knees and toes and eyes and ears and mouth and nose. Humpback, shoulders, knees and toes. Knees and toes. And that's how you can tell I have two small children. Anyway, I showed Kukul the scroll and he told me he'd be back tomorrow night with a dark organ. I headed to the refugee camp and warned the Marquis that the Lord Commander's wrath was heading his way and I implored him to flee. But he was done running and he wanted my help building up the camp's defenses. It was time to stand and fight. Honestly, that sounds like a terrible plan since this camp is full of rich people who have never fought in their entire lives, but I didn't argue. I randomly bought a whole bunch of dairy from Rosa. I genuinely have no idea why. And then healed another blue orb. I did a quick zombie inventory and decided I could use some higher quality zombies. So I resurrected zombie number 38, modified a bunch of body parts and hacked at him until he had max efficiency. I chucked him onto saw some flitch. He goes fast. He zooms along. Good one, mate. I snagged this zombie to work on next, but as night arrived, I ducked over to visit Kukul again. He'd brought a dark organ, so we were ready to cast the spell. Boom, boom, bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Boom, 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 bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Boom, boom, bum, bum, want to look like everyone. Your hump's still there. But now I have a hump. <laughs> Hunchback squirrels. <laughs> <laughs> so the spell sort of worked. It didn't heal his hunchback, but it did cause him to see everyone else as hunchbacked. So I guess he technically looked the same as everyone else now, at least from his perspective. He wasn't pleased though, so he refused to give me the ancient axe. I tried a different tact, offering free drinks at my tavern. He agreed, but asked me to upgrade the tavern a bit first. So I removed all the old tables and built new ones. It took a bit of doing because I had to shoo all these nerds out of the way, but I got there eventually. And with these fancy tables, the tavern quality shot up to 75. I hosted yet another of Miss Charm's performance and with the newly improved tavern quality, I earned a whopping four gold and 10 silver. I headed up to the refugee camp and finally built the farm animal area for the tanner. I think this is a prime example of bad priorities as the camp could be attacked any moment. So I really should have started building up defenses first but whatever. My next task was to buy a cow and hens to put in there. I was also able to purchase these bags from her. And these are bigger than the universal bags. The difference is they can only hold a specific type of item, food, potions, or building materials. I don't carry potions with me everywhere, so that one was useless, but the food and builder's bags were genius. I filled the builder's bag up exactly as you'd expect, and I was able to carry more wine than ever in my new food bag. Wonderful news for my rampant alcoholism. I dealt with another corpse and then wandered back to Kukul yet again to inform him that my tavern should now be up to his lofty standards. 
He was pleased and he finally gave me the ancient pickaxe. I then went to church. I probably have close to a thousand faith now, so I don't really need to do this every week, but like the candles at least, I could just relax on the candles, but I gotta get as much faith as possible. Great sermon. I then bought a cow from Rosa. It took some convincing since her cows are her best friends. But I said, if you love someone, set them free. And she thought that was profound. She asked for more wisdom. So I said, to love a cow means to sell it for one gold. True words were never spoken. So she sold me her cow. I also bought some hens from this chicken farm. Oh, there's the cow and chickens. Nice. It's quite a nice settlement they've got going here now. Beautiful. Completing this last quest for the Tanner unlocked access to purchase the recipes for the builder's bag. So I made myself a second one. I visited the talking skull and there was already three gold 30 waiting for me. Business is a booming. I then brought the ancient pickaxe to Jerry. This scene was set two years after the beginning of King Jove's holy war on the ancient God. And it showed their final act of war. Sacrificing the final symbol of the old faith. It's not a good plan guys. It's just not a good plan. That looked pretty cool though. Oh, that's the, that's the bridge. That's the bridge to nowhere in the east of the map. There you go. Next up were the ancient keys and this depicted an imprisoned Heradric on the day before his execution. Apparently Heradric had given himself up after rescuing Chain as their love had been unable to prosper and he was racked with guilt. Kresvold managed to pay him one last visit and he explained that this new world was one of repression, trials and execution. And now, thanks to the destruction of the bridge, walking dead were on the loose. Kresvold said he didn't want to see his friend die and Heradric responded epically, then you'll just have to close your eyes. Next was the clay pot of tar and this took us to the scene of Heradric's birth. King Jove decreed that no one was allowed to say or think that the walking dead was his fault. And he also decreed that everyone should believe it was the pagan's fault. That sounded like a very convincing argument to me. Then, just as the burning was to commence, a flashbang came out of nowhere and Kresvold rescued Heradric from the flames. Jerry then randomly told me a story, one that I thought might be a clue to his identity. He told me King Jove's impatient heir cut off his dad's head and buried the head separately from the body. Hmm. Next on the list of artifacts to collect were the priestess's ring and the priest's signet. Also, check out this artifact fact museum update. All right, let's, let's do a little experiment, people. Watch the pace of a 10% zombie. Pretty slow, pretty flaming slow. But you know, not the worst thing I've ever seen. Now, a 65% zombie. This will obviously be six and a half times faster, but... And that, my friends, is the difference between a crappy zombie and a legend zombie. I spent some time working in the morgue and I had so many organs flying around by this point that I needed more storage again. So I added another three mortuary racks. I perfected another zombie and chucked him in the yard and then paid Dig a visit. Ding dong, bing bang bong. I asked for the priest's signet, but he said he likes to put honey on it and lick it so he won't part with it easily. He wanted in on the rat racing. So he asked me if I could get the lighthouse keeper's best rat and then we could talk. The lighthouse keeper's rats had quite inconveniently been stolen. So he told me to visit Kukul, who apparently sells rats. I buried another 20 white skull body and on day 292, I paid the farmer a visit. Apparently the priestess's ring was his wife's. When I asked about it, he got extremely angry. So I asked his son who said she was a lovely woman, but sickly. And since she died, his father had been devastated. I asked the miller, the farmer's brother, and he said she had been an incredible healer. In fact, she'd been accused of being a witch. So he suggested I ask Clotho. I did, and she said she could use a compliment for me first. So I told her all three of her chins were attractive. Somehow she could remember all this, so I guess her amnesia is selective, but she told me the farmer's wife was Bella, her and Shane's sister and the third priestess. She'd overused her healing magic and died as a result. I went to commiserate with the farmer and he explained she was such a loving person that she couldn't help but use her healing magic as she thought that one life in exchange for many was worth it. I said, that's nice mate, but can I have her ring? And he told me he had two of her rings. One was buried in her grave and the other was the only thing he had left to remember her. I had the option to buy the ring off him for one gold, but there was no way I was doing that. <laughs> oh, zero percent. Oh my gosh. Zero percent rotten body. And I assume if I chuck it on here, I can... Yep, there's a ring. Got any decent organs? Nah. I then disposed of the priestess's thoroughly rotten body in the most fitting way I could think of. Ah. Float well, O oh farmer's wife, Bella. You cured many people while you were alive. And now that you are dead, you shall float. Goodness me, that was a touching eulogy. 
I truly know how to honor the dead, don't I? I built some defensive stakes around the refugee camp, dealt with another body, and then tried to buy a rat off Kukul. Unfortunately, he was sold out, and he told me he'd sold his best rat to the Baron. I bought it off him for one gold. Man, these quests really make you run around like a goose on the loose, don't they? I hit up my tavern, which had earned over five gold in my absence, and I got Miss Charm to perform yet again, earning another four gold 25. Have I mentioned that business is a boomin'? I waited for Dig to emerge from his weird little pot barrel hole thing. Ding dong bing da dong dong. He's your super rat, you weirdo. And with that, I finally earned my priest's signet. I scooped up a bunch of clay, check out that scooping technique, and put a bunch of clay bowls onto craft. I also crafted five steel swords, as I'll need these for the Marquis's next quest, which is to equip the refugees with weaponry. I then watched the Priestess's Ring movie with Jerry. This showed ancient Clotho at her 200 years ago attempt to kill thousands of people with the Necronomicon, not to be confused with her 30 years ago attempt when she succeeded in breaking the ancient contract. This ancient attempt failed because Dig had tricked her. The ritual summoned the ancient god instead of killing people. Dig appeared out of nowhere with Heradric and Kresvold, safe after their escape from Heradric's burning. They implored the ancient god to help them correct the damage that had been done to the world, but he said that it was no longer his concern. But apparently he changed his mind because in the priest's signet movie, he was writing the ancient contract that would keep the walking dead in check and save the world. Peace, not war. Faith, not heresy. Freedom, not prisons. Forgiveness, not revenge. Hope, not despair and the ships of the dead, not walking dead. The last part of the contract assured the eternal punishment of the truly guilty, presumably Jove and Lucius. This sparked Jerry's memory, and he raged about how the ancient god had turned King Jove into a walking corpse. He couldn't even kill himself. He could only drink the pain away. The final artifact was a brick from the church, so I went and grabbed it immediately. This scene showed the original church being built, with the world looking a heck of a lot more healthy thanks to the ancient god's contract. Kane arrived to ask Horadric if she could live in the village. He asked about Clotho, but Chain explained she needed to stay in the swamp because she's a bit crazy. Heradric pleaded with her. Maybe after even all that had gone wrong, they could find a future together. And finally, Jerry remembered. He was the decapitated skull of King Jove. But he felt it was unfair. Why was he punished when it was Lucius who destroyed the bridge? Honestly, that's pretty weak, Jerry. Blame shifting when you were the king. But I came up with an idea to see one more flashback. We still had one remaining ancient artifact on our hands. Jerry himself. And so I placed the old talking skull into the machine. We were transported back five years before the ancient contract, where King Jove and Lucius were enjoying a friendly bath. Jove masterminded the next step of the plan, to kill the master and use his martyrdom as the catalyst to take control as king and wage war on the ancient god. So yeah, it was definitely all Jerry's fault. Jerry was suitably sad to hear of how much of a giant turd he'd been 200 years ago, but on the plus side, he randomly remembered an ancient treasure trove he'd buried. I filled up the artifact display, went to church, and then dug up the treasure. It had 200-year-old elite wine in it. So Jerry was over the moon. He could really lean into drinking himself into oblivion so he never remembered how terrible a king he was. There was also 10 gold for me. I then randomly decided to build all these lanterns leading up to the quarry. I also built a third stone cutter and chucked a zombie on to break down stone, as this first guy was too flame and slow to keep up with demand. I refilled my embalming fluid shelf, modified a bunch of body parts, and resurrected zombie number 39 and 40. Two 20 white skull zombies with 50% efficiency. I took these fellas up to the quarry and placed them on the marble quarry. I had heaps of marble stockpiles but I had ambitions to make tons more grave decorations, so I figured I might as well increase the rate of marble collection just in case. I also built three more trunks in the yard to make sure there was space for all the marble, and I queued up a bunch of wood wedges as these are used to break down marble chunks. I built the sword rack at the refugee camp, and the Marquis's next offensive build request was a watchtower. I crafted a bunch of plus 11 grave fences and began placing them, because I figured I might as well try and get the graveyard looking as pretty as possible. I paused a couple of times to deal with fresh bodies, but by day 300, well over half of the graves had fancy gold accents fences. I then finally had enough camp happiness to build the watchtower, and the Marquis was pleased. This was the ultimate completion of the camp, and he rewarded me appropriately. But his joy was short-lived, as he was informed a huge army was marching towards them, far bigger than they could possibly repel even with their new defenses. For my part, I was just happy that he'd given me a big universal bag. I returned home and soldiers awaited me. I assumed they were to escort me to the mountain fort, but no, it was Lady Beatrice. She offered to save the refugees, in exchange for a dark and evil task. She wanted me to make her five emulsions of death, which she would use to turn the soldiers of the mountain fort into ghouls, undead creatures far more terrifying than mere zombies. She also revealed that she'd been watching my every move via that stinky stuff she sprayed on me the first time we met, and it was her who had ruined our efforts to restore Clotho's memory. Basically, I had three choices. I either help her by making the emulsions, I say I'm going to help her but then betray her, or I refuse to help her. I immediately googled what the best option was, and realized that each choice resulted in different perks being awarded to the player. I wanted the industriousness 
bonus perk, as that would increase my chance of making gold star marble statues, and so I agreed to help her. I made the most evil choice purely for selfish gain. I mean, so what if ghouls become a reality? It's not that big a deal. I put the emulsions onto the still, and while I was waiting, I healed her soul. When they were ready, I took them and gave them to Lady Beatrice. She was amazed I didn't betray her, but little does she know, I just really want that banger perk. She also promised that the refugees would be safe. I guess until the ghouls get bored and come to kill them. I waited around until the dawn of day 301. That's right, we've cleared 300 days, people. Have some bonus days. You're very welcome. And I told the refugees they were safe. I returned to the morgue and found three corpses and a note from Lady Beatrice. She said these three had refused to turn into ghouls, and so she wanted me to dispose of them. And I received the industriousness perk. And that was the end of the game of Crohn's DLC, by the way. A spicy tale that delved deeply into how the ancient contract was broken by Clotho 30 years ago. Except I don't think we ever worked out how to restore the ancient contract, and I just unleashed ghouls. So I think the world is screwed. Anyway, I then headed up to the portal with the six keys I'd finished collecting almost 100 days ago, and I finished the game. But I'm not going to show you that just yet, as I want to talk to you about what I did after beating the game. See, once you activate the portal, you can continue playing, which is what I did. From day 302 to 310, I worked on the graveyard. My ambition was to fill every single grave with 26 white skull corpses, and adorn every grave with max level decorations. I knew this would get the graveyard quality above 2000, and that sounded exciting to me. And so I spent 8 or so days crafting gold star chisels, with which I sculpted gold star marble busts, with which I crafted 15 star grave statues. I made the few remaining grave fences I needed too, and I began churning out as many 26 white skull corpses as I could. But I soon realized the grind was immense. I had to do each marble sculpture one by one, which was tedious, but the worst of it was the corpse prep. I had to modify body parts one white skull at a time, and this just took forever. I also would have had to sleep through day after day to keep the corpses coming, as I needed them for sin shards, and I would have had to embalm like 80 more corpses too. And so I got bored. I did at least place all the grave decorations so the place looked pretty, but I gave up on day 310 with a graveyard quality of 740. Anyway, let's backtrack to day 301, the day I beat the game. Craft the emitter. Craft the barrel. Oh! It's actually happening. All my new friends came to see me off, which was quite touching. love. So I was reunited with my one true love, just not in the way I expected. She came to our side instead of me returning home. And that was the end of the base game. But my love had one item from our world with her. So we placed that in the archaeological machine to see if we could learn anything. This is how it all started. Getting some milk. Dad's, dad's getting some milk from the grocery store. We'll be back soon. <laughs> Gary and his teddy bear walking home. Do I get hit by a car? Is that what happens? Looking at my phone. Slip in the rain, get hit by a car. Oh, so this guy was the ancient god the whole time. Okay. Sort the wheat from the chaff. Oh, I got split in half. The aggressive side of me was sent to the town, and I was sent to the village. I never went to the town, and I guess that's why. I was already there in my aggressive form. I have no idea what the significance of this is, but it's pretty cool, I guess. And that bonus scene was the end of the Stranger Sins DLC, which added the tavern and the rich backstory as to how the world collapsed into ruin 200 years ago. But as for these 300 days, that's it. And we can only assume the Graveyard Keeper continued trying to fight off the ancient curse. I like to think he succeeded, but let's be honest, there are ghouls out there now, so he probably didn't. The main thing is, Jerry got his ancient wine. Oh, and here's a little bonus for you. Yeah, so basically, as you can see, I went and collected all my zombies. I think there's like 35 of them or something. Who knows? And uh, it's just a bit of a zombie slumber party. No big deal. Check out this epic 300-day movie of an insanely efficient quest towards Stardew Valley perfection.